live? I believe we are live. All right. You uh, you introduce you introduce us this time. Um, I have to do all the rest of the talking. Why don't you introduce us? Okay. And do the, talk, the rest uh, of the talking. <laughs> I'm Justin. It's my wife Penelope. We are from Four Point Toys. This is uh, from what we call from retro to right now, where we uh, review and talk about things that we love. Um, we do this for a living as well. You know, we uh, buy and sell toys and collectibles. Yes. But uh, we are also collectors, and it's very hard to be both. Uh, which is why we have a museum. Yeah, it's hard and it's not hard. Like, it's hard to not sell everything, but it's also hard to... I just want to keep everything we Yeah, get. same. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's what it comes down to. That's why we've turned part of the store into a museum. Yes. <laughs> uh, somebody, a mentor once told me that you can't be both. You can't be a toy dealer and a collector. You, you, and yeah, we think, have done our best to prove yeah, it wrong. And I think you almost have to be sometimes because otherwise what's the point it's not like we're getting rich doing this we have to do it because we love it yeah. <laughs> so these reviews um like i said we call them from retro right now uh we do them live with a studio audience um yes. you might be watching this on youtube not live after the yeah. fact uh to be part of our audience and to be able to ask questions or uh be you know uh, make comments and we will read the comments uh while we're going um, you have to be part of our Patreon. You have to be one yes. of our Patreon backers our in, in our Patreon group. Our VIP. Yes. yes. Our so VIPs. We do have a couple VIPs in we've here got right a couple now. people in here with us. Georgia, it's nice to see you, Mark. Georgia's a brand new VIP. Yes, uh, I, I have a feeling that maybe Georgia signed up just to hear hear us talk about My Little Pony. Oh, maybe. So I'm, I'm I'm feeling a little nervous. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Um, but no, if you guys are interested, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're interested in becoming a Farpoint VIP, please go to the link right above my head, Patreon.com/slash/FarpointToys. You get access to sneak peeks, behind the scenes stuff here at Farpoint. We record this kind of much of right now stuff in our group with our live studio audience making yep. their comments. So I'm going to make that go away. I see that we have good. Mr. Mark Acaro here, um, who Ooh. Alicia. I mean, we have more a, comments. A, a lot of our Alex, Dean is here, here. Tara, um, Veronica. Hi, it's nice to see you guys. So uh, we definitely have some uh, VIP members who are very knowledgeable. Who really help us? It adds to our reviews. I think. Oh, absolutely! Having uh, not just the two of us, but other folks to bounce our commentary off of, yeah, um, is great. You know, and again, like Justin said, some of our VIPs uh, know a ton about toys, yeah. and they can give their little tidbits in the comments. Yeah, so awesome. we these these reviews are a little bit different than the typical, um, very in depth, um, almost uh, you know medical. Uh, toy reviews. There's a lot of people who go out yes. there and do a lot sterile, of sterile, almost sterile. Well, you know, yeah. we try and bring. A little, it's more of a conversation with us. Um, we don't. We know a little bit about everything instead of everything <laughs> about a little bit. Um, and we try and bring some personality to talking about the toys, just the way you'd be hanging out in your local toy store. That we, you know, when we're not closed for COVID, this is how we interact with folks anyway. Yeah, so, that's um, one of the reasons we started doing these reviews, because we've been closed uh, so long. Bringing Farpoint to you guys, yep. because you guys can't come to us. Or in Georgia's case, she's all the way in Ireland, so uh, uh, Georgia, you're not going to be coming oh, in the Banshee? store anytime soon. Where's He's Banshee? Scottish. He's oh, Scottish. Yeah, yeah. We have a little mascot. We'll talk He's about a, him later. For, well, we do live claim sales as well. Yes. We do them much the same <laughs> way. Uh, that we do this. Yeah. And now if you're looking for a kind of toy review where um, you're going to have the specifics of what kind of plastic made these things <laughs> um, and what factory they came out of on what date and the exact measurements of the hair length of a mail away pony, this isn't that review. <laughs> oh, I got my ruler out and everything. Yeah, well, we're going to, we're, we're more about <laughs> having a conversation about the toys and maybe sharing some stories. Yeah. Um, so what are we talking about today? We are talking about My Little Pony. Now, I personally collect My Little Pony. I'm a My Little Pony uh, fan from the time I was... Uh, my, my Little Pony came out in 82. I was three years old in 82, so I've been a My Little Pony fan since 1982. Um, so My Little Pony started the same year G.I. Joe started, uh, near Real American Hero. Uh, yeah, My Little Pony kind of had like a test run in 81 where they did My Pretty Pony, which is basically a giant version. Uh, mine, I, I didn't bring it today, but uh, it's, it's a giant version of a My Little Pony. And they turned my pretty pony, shrunk her down, and turned her into my little pony. she wasn't pony. fantastically colored either. It was like a brown, um, plain... There was a brown one that yeah. was more of like a plain, regular-looking pony. And then there was also the cotton candy style, which is the pink. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you've got the pink, one that was pink, and one that was more of a traditional pony color. And I think that was a little bit of a test market. Like, would little girls want brightly colored ponies? It turns out, we did. Um, Just smaller. Yeah. Just, oh yeah, just it exactly the same like, mold, just shrunk down. It yeah. seems like, um, maybe starting with Star Wars, that, you know, before before Star Wars, you know, Fisher-Price did it, but before Star Wars shrunk toys down, 
to, you know, Bernie Loomis's thumb, <laughs> uh, three and three quarter. You know, you had G.I. Joe 12 inch, you had Barbie, uh, put the first pony was very big. Yeah. It seemed like th- there was a, a point where they shrunk the toys down. Maybe mold making got better. You know, Migos were six inches. Yeah. Uh, six million dollar man was big. Yeah. Um, 12, 12 inch was the standard for action figures. It seemed like the toy down. makers, and, and this is going to make a point today, um, realize that if you make the toys smaller, you can have play sets to play with these toys in. And the play sets can be enormous, as we're going to find. Uh, we have a Paradise Estate back there behind us. Um, <laughs> it's huge. I literally had to clear an entire table just for it. Um, yeah, so uh, everything you're going to see today is from my personal collection. Um, some of this stuff is considered pretty rare. Some of it I just really love and I wanted to talk about. Um, but it's all just cool stuff, mostly mail aways although there are some uh, standard releases that have been considered, started being considered pretty rare, especially in recent years. Um, I learned yesterday looking stuff up, that My Little Pony has gone absolutely insane. Well, the, the vintage <laughs> toys in general have. Um, almost all toy lines across the board. Yeah. I, I think that's owed... Crazy. Uh, in no small <laughs> amount. First of all, there's a huge nostalgia boom going on right now. But I think that shows like the toys that made us. Yes, the toys that made us, I believe, had a huge uh, yeah. part in that because there was a My Little Pony episode. If you think about every toy line that they have mentioned, I don't know about you know uh, Hello Kitty per se, but uh, as far as the major American toy lines, yeah. every toy line got a huge bump as, as far as vintage goes on yeah. the secondary market. I, I, I agree with you. And it's people who weren't necessarily hardcore collectors seeing that show and thinking to themselves, oh, hey, I would love to have a cotton candy yeah. for my desk. And pretty soon just it's making everything go up. Yep. Now, if you haven't seen the show, uh, that would be a great companion piece. Yeah. After you're done watching this review, go yeah. watch the toys that made us My Little Pony episode i think it's season two or one i think it's season two yeah yeah barbie was season one so season two yeah. uh also we are um on an episode by the Ooh. same company they sell yes. co- from a show called the toys <laughs> no wait it's uh, a toy store near you, a toy store near you. <laughs> on amazon prime just uh, got released on christmas day yes. and we, we have a uh, farpoint toys has an episode yes. on that all right enough babbling let's talk about my little pony right. okay so as we mentioned already uh, my little pony was kind of pre-born in 1981 with my pretty pony who was a large size, same basic mold uh, as a, a the collector pose ponies that came out in 1982. That's what they're called. Um, I guess I should have brought a, an example of every kind of pony, but I really just wanted to talk about the really rare yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can get into the basics yeah. at some point. Maybe do the first year. Georgia just asked an amazing <laughs> Georgia question. Georgia just asked a great and question. obviously Georgia knows ponies <laughs> um, because she's looking at this display here. Yes. And you mentioned this before we even I set did, it up. I did. I did mention it. So I felt a little strange about bringing some of my personal stuff because I'm... I'm not necessarily a picky collector. Some of my stuff may be incomplete. Some of it, like some of my ponies, you'll notice, have haircuts, which is not something I would have done to them. They were I purchased them after uh, I was a kid, and, and other people cut their hair. Well, I you would also never. got yard sale ponies when you were a kid. When I was young, I did often get ponies at yard sales and stuff like that. So even though they weren't um, bought new, they were still your original ponies. Yes. So, so yeah, the, some of my ponies came to me used whether it was back in the 80s and 90s or, or more recently. Yeah. So um, I was a little hesitant about what I should bring today to talk about. And one of the things that I had said was, you know, there's this set of 12, one for each month, birth flower ponies. You see 11 of them up there. They're the white with pink. Um, Georgia just asked, which one am I missing? There's one for every month. I am missing February. February. February, huh? February. So, uh, you do I, have your birth month. I do, which is the first one I bought because I wanted it desperately when I was a kid and I never got it. So that was the first birth flower pony that I bought. Every one of those <laughs> is a mail away. Yes. And what's really cool is that I actually... Let's skip ahead. Here, can you uh, actually... What would you uh, like? In the very Any... front, on the very bottom, there's a paper. A piece of paper. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm going to swap over to camera two so you guys can get a good look. Just like... um, There's actually another one. Can you grab them both? Sure. Um, I'm, scared, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm glad that Georgia asked that question, so it gave me a good excuse to do this. Um, just like G.I. Joe and Transformers and a lot of Hasbro products, um, you could get mail aways Now, these are some of the little pamphlets. I'm going to go to camera two so you guys can get a better look at some of those little pamphlets there. Um, My Little Pony. Oh, this one's upside down. Nope, now they're both upside down. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because it's reversed. It makes you think your hands are... Yes. Yeah. So these are some pamphlets um, you could do to uh, buy some uh, Mail Away My Little Ponies. Um, this one is for the birth flower ponies. If you look, they're on the back there. February, I'm missing oh, so Violet. Oh, you had to choose. Yes. Now, you could either choose, or if you guys can see that, you could actually buy one for $3 plus two horseshoe points, which are exactly like flag points. On G.I. Joe. From G.I. Joe's. Right. Um, you could get one for three dollars plus two horseshoe points, or get all twelve. Well, describe for what horseshoe bucks. points would be. They they were on I the actually, packaging. Yeah, I actually have one. 
I have a piece of packaging right here. Let's see. There you go. Right there in the corner. This box came with four horse, horseshoe points. And that's basically like uh, you cut it out. It's like a proof of purchase. Uh, you cut it out and you mail it in along with your pamphlet now, and buy the pony that you want from I the pamphlet. I assume the bigger the playset or vehicle or whatever, the yeah. more points were on yes. that thing. Uh, just like G.I. Joe. Yeah, the that's why I assume that. You get more points the bigger the piece and the more expensive the piece was. Yeah. Um, and also the bigger and cooler the thing you wanted was, the more points and the more cash, obviously, gotcha. you needed. Yeah. Um, so both of these pamphlets mention the um, birth flower ponies. They are from, you're putting me on the spot, 84 to 86. It was a two-year run that you could grab those. Um, and like I said, they were three bucks and four horseshoe points. Two horseshoe points, I'm sorry. Um Wow. Yeah, grab So it's, grab, it's grab actually really cool that you have this many of them. You know, uh, the one on the very bottom in the front, or you can just hand me any of them. <laughs> just start handing them over. <laughs> are they, what are the symbols? Are they the, uh, the star symbols, signs? The symbols are just different flowers. Oh. For the different months. So you're putting me on the spot. I don't know my flowers. But we had carnation for January, uh, violet for February. That looks like an iris. Um, this is a daffodil for March, I oh. believe. Uh, Daisy for April. Are those official flowers for those months? Or did, did, did uh, Hasbro just make that up? You know, that's a great question. Um, you know, mine is Morning Glory. You want to grab mine? It's on the very bottom shelf, closest to the front. Um, I remember as a kid, my mom always talking about Morning Glory in regards to me. So I'm guessing that it was an actual... I'm having a lot of trouble getting these on camera. <laughs> it's because the camera's reversed, so it's weird. you got to pull it the other way. There I'm, uh, I'm guessing that Morning Glory is actually the birth the birth flower for September. Hmm. That's, that's my i got to tell you, there. I have no idea what January's birth flower would be. Uh, carnation, according okay. to my list. Um, I know my stone. <laughs> well, yeah, everybody knows, their, uh, everybody knows their stones. We've got... Let's see. Uh, so Eric said... He used to cut. He used to give haircuts to his sister's ponies. Oh, Eric! And looking no. back, he probably shouldn't have done no, that. No, Eric, you definitely should not have done that. That's a very bad move on your part. You've been very bad. Um, April was Daisy. May, Lily of the Valley. June, Rose. July, Water Lily. August, Poppy. September, Morning Glory. Uh, October, Cosmos. November, Chrysanthemum. And December was Holly. Now, just like regular box ponies, did these come with brushes and stuff? No, this particular the, this, these particular ponies came just as you see them because they were mass produced. They made a ton of these, and I'm just gonna hold another one up here in front of the camera. Well, they, yeah, they made a ton of them, watch. but they were only way only way you can yeah. get them is uh, yeah. mail order. They couldn't have made as many as they make production ponies. No, it was in production for two years though, so that's another thing to consider. Um, Morning glories are beautiful. I have a few that grow each year. Oh, Veronica, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and you can actually see all of these ponies. Ooh. They came with a little bit of a curl in their hair. Uh, some of them have had their hair brushed out many times by little girls. So some of them are in a little bit better shape with their little curls left and intact. You see, it's a, it's a thing. So collecting G.I. Joes, every figure is the same. You know, there's no hair fibers or anything to get really messed up. Yeah. You know, thumbs and elbows and stuff like that. But the different states of hair when you buy these things used. It's a lot like... Um, Think of dolls with their fabric clothing um, or, or their hair. You know, it's, it's a similar kind of yeah. deal. Uh, you have the plastic to deal with, and there's so many variations with that. Not just production variants, but over time. Like, my birth flower ponies are just the tiniest bit yellowed. They were originally, like, pure, pure white. Because? Because time... Because your mother was a smoker. These were never in my mother's house. These oh, all, okay. Yeah, these all all came after the. Fact. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. I never owned any of these in antiquity. None so you never these... mailed mail ready for anything as a kid. I have one, and that was the first one I was going to talk about, but I got distracted by George's great question right. about the birth flower ponies. Um, I want to make sure I went over everything I wanted to talk about. We talked about horseshoe points, which were a big deal. We talked about the pamphlets, which I had a few of. I want to say Georgia mentioned, mentioned that she might have a spare. So Georgia oh, no. is probably a, a big pony collector. <laughs> she may have a spare. You guys might want to get together. Oh, geez. Oh, man. That would be great. Kara said um, they look amazing. Yeah. Fe uh, February. I don't... I honestly... I bought all of these. Um, I don't want to say recently. I've been seriously collecting ponies now for about 12 years. Um, I have I still have all of my original ponies from when I was a kid. Lucky and you. Well, I'm lucky, but... The only reason I have them still is because when I was very, very small, I was seven, we moved. And all of my stuff went into temporary storage, and I didn't get it back until about 15 years ago. I'm 42 this year, so that'll tell you how long that stuff was in storage. Um, I'm lucky that it was in a good place when it was stored. It was kept somewhat temperature controlled all of that time. There was no serious damage to anything. Um, 
but the fact that I didn't have them as a kid as long as I would have liked actually made them be in better condition Makes sense. when I got them back. And getting them back, like I said, it was about 15 years ago I got them back out of an old, old storage unit from a friend. We always say this about, especially uh, girl, I hate to use the term, but girl toy collections. Um, f- girls tend to hold on to their toys as opposed to boys. When we got out of toys, other than Mr. Mark or you know a few of you, <laughs> um, we got out and, and sold them off or gave them away. Whereas you guys kind of put your toys away. Girl cl- toy collections come, in, come into the store much less often than than boy toys collections. And I, you know, I'm not sure why that is exactly. Do you have a way exactly. you can put these back up? Yeah, I can put them any which way. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave Morning Glory here with me because because of reasons. <laughs> you can put her on the bottom shelf in the front just so there's not like a gaping hole there <laughs> in my little display. Um, yeah. So it's my display now. Of all of the mail away stuff that I have, I only had one from when I was a little girl, and you know, I wasn't the richest kid when I was little. Um, I would get new ponies only on very special occasions. Birthday, maybe I'd get one for my birthday, one for Christmas, something like that. Um, every once in a while, our local Five and Dime would have some, like on clearance, and I might get one or two just because. A lot of the rest of my ponies came either from gifts from family members or from yard sales, like Justin mentioned. Um, or then later, much later in life, I would started collecting them more seriously. But as far as my original collection goes, um, a lot of it was secondhand at yard sales and stuff like that. And I was fine with it. It never bothered me. Um... But there was one very special pony that I did. It was a big deal. We didn't mail away for stuff because that was like money and you had to get a check and all this. We didn't do that stuff. It was crazy. But there was one pony that we absolutely had to have. And I'm going to cycle back in time a little bit. These were from 84 to 86. Um, The one I'm going to talk about right now is from 83, 84. That's kind of like year two, I guess you could call it. Um, And Baby Ember was a big deal because there was no baby ponies before this. Oh, she's the first mold of baby ponies? There was never a baby pony before. And I'm going to pull out my Baby Ember right now. Mine was this blue one. Now, what's really interesting about Baby Ember... Should I go to camera two? I kind of like camera one. Um, what's really cool about Baby Ember... Uh, first of all, again, like I said, the first baby pony ever offered. Um, not available in stores. You had to do the mail away. You were allowed to choose of three colors. You could either go with the blue, which is the one that I chose as a kid. You could go with the pink which is this one here, or you could do the lavender, which is the movie version. There was a, or the the special version, I should say. Um, The first cartoon special came out in 84. So before My Little Pony was ever a movie uh, or or a show, it was the toys. I need need clarification real quick. Yeah. They offered that mail away in three different colors? Yes. And you had to choose which color you wanted? You actually had to rank your choices. Your first choice, your second choice, and your third choice. Depending they must on have what had, that, had co- that color plastic laying around or something. Uh, I don't know where they got the idea to do it. Do you have all three? I do have all three. Only the uh-huh. blue one? Oh, I have all three, yes. Um, only the blue one was mine from originally from when I was a kid. Um, but the So My Little Pony came out in 81, 82, like I said, as a toy. Um, then in 84, yeah, in 84, um, the cartoon special came out which was originally just called My Little Pony. I don't know if they didn't, ex- Hasbro and, and Toei Animation didn't expect the cartoon to take off, didn't expect anyone to care about it. Oh, so it. for the first few years there was no cartoon to back the ponies up? Nope. It wow. was just, uh, you know, the, and I have to say my biggest um, exposure to My Little Pony was the toys. I watched the show uh, here and there. Um, we didn't go and see the movie. Like I said, I was a poor kid. We didn't go to the movies. Oh, wow, so it wasn't like um, in 82 um, when G.I. Joe launched, it was mass media with a you know a tv uh special five part miniseries a comic book the toys uh that pony didn't have that huh most of the story around my little pony came on the stories on the back of the cards or on the back of the boxes were they like file cards they kind of were they didn't have like a cutout um i wish i had some examples larry like, hama right there i like, should have had like all these images ready candy, to go. primary military specialty no. um <laughs> we're so derailing i apologize sorry um it's fine um no, they're just like a little cute story, like Baby Ember loves to frolic through the forest and really loves cotton candy lollipops. You know, there's be a little story on the okay. back. Or in this case, but it case, gives them a little bit of personality. Yeah, which and is it, like like the file card. Yes, and it gave me a chance as a kid, not having the cartoon out yet, to make up my own stories about the characters and like how they would interact with each other and play and all that stuff. Um, but Baby Ember was cool. Baby Ember was the star of the uh, later later retitled Rescue from Midnight Castle. 
um, which was the just My Little Pony cartoon special. Came out in eighty four. BB Ember was originally available starting in eighty three, as like a prequel. When when I got this, I had not seen the movie. I hadn't so seen they were anything. launching her with the miniseries. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, and was, the new mold of babies. Yes, babies being a thing was launched as a mail away. Okay. Um, what was the, what was the color you ordered? I ordered blue. Okay, so that's your original blue. This is my original BB Ember. And you've uh, you've accumulated the other ones since. Yeah, I've character. gotten the now the lavender one is the one that actually starred in the cartoon special. Um, she got rescued from Midnight Castle. She's like Zartan. She changes color. Blimey, Zartan. Ember is an interesting character um, from a toy perspective because all three of these were Ember, which blew my mind as a kid. But um, to add even more weirdness to that, um, in 84, 85, we had a Listen and Fun Baby Ember. Now, you'll recognize Listen and Fun. Hasbro loved the Listen yes, and Fun. If you're a G.I. Joe fan, you've certainly heard of Listen and Fun. Tripwire. Tripwire, yeah. You would get a audio cassette and a toy, and you could listen along and then play with your little toy. Um, I will never forget, this one was also mine from when I was a kid. Now, not a mail away. You could go out and buy this at a regular store. Um, I had my first big dentist appointment as a little kid, and I was terrified. And my mom bought me this so that I wouldn't be scared, and I brought it along with me to the dentist. Oh, that's a great yeah. memory. <laughs> I'm getting all choked that's up thinking about it. That's an amazing memory. Yeah. I don't think you ever told me that. I, you know, it's funny. You saw the tape? I have no idea where the tape is. It might be somewhere. We need to find you the tape. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so I'm, I'm kind of derailing a little bit, but... um. Baby Ember, so babe, this is Baby Ember, this one's Baby Ember, this one's also Baby Ember, and the year after So they were really going one, hard on making Ember a star character. Now, I want to show you guys something that's kind of interesting. Another thing that made Baby Ember so weird and cool, again, if you take a look, there's no symbol on the butt. Now, even if you guys aren't really into My Little Pony, you certainly know that the whole deal with My Little Pony is these, they're called cutie marks now, they made that up recently, that title. Uh, we just called them butt symbols when I was a kid. <laughs> Um, baby Ember, no butt symbol. Baby Ember, no butt symbol. Nothing on the butt. Nothing on the butt. Right? Wow. Right? Weird. Only pony that ever, aside from my pretty pony that ever came out that didn't have anything specific on its butt, this baby Ember has, if you guys can see, it's got a little white star. There's no backstory as to why baby Ember got a star. I think they just decided, you know. Now, which version is that? This is the Listen and Fun version that came out the next year. So none of the male ways have any butt no, love. no, no butt love. <laughs> um, Tara, Tara said um, she ha still has some of her uh, hers, and she wants to know um, do, if you have any of the baby twins. Oh, gosh, do I? Um, um, she can't remember the names, but she had a oh, set of Pegasus baby twins. A lot of them had silly names, like um, Sneezy and Wheezy and stuff like that. Um, the little newborns, they're super cute. I have, Tara, uh, guys, I, I, I have so many ponies. This is not even, like, a third of my collection. I have hundreds no, of My Little Ponies. No, there's tubs. You should see the tubs she has. I have hundreds and hundreds of My Little Ponies. Now, my original collection from when I was a kid is only a few dozen there's, like um, that. Honestly, um, if you watch <laughs> the uh, Toy Story near you, there's a sh quick shot of a couple of the shelves of her ponies when she had them displayed. yes. Because um, there was a couple shots of our personal stuff. Yeah, there were a few shots of our personal stuff. So you can get a taste for my collection just, just from that little... There's actually a close-up of Baby Ember. I made sure to do that because... Now, Alex said that they would call um, <laughs> the, the, the buttless symboled ponies, um, the, the rude ponies would call them uh, blank flanks. <laughs> and George just said that Speckles and Bunky are Pegasus twins. They had ridiculous names. Oh. And um, Georgia being uh, from... Where does Bunky come from? I don't know. Georgia being from, uh, oh, being from the UK, I'm sure you get some really cool... I didn't want to get into she, that. I don't know if she's originally from the UK. Uh, well, living there now, um, I you must have some amazing variants. There are some uh, crazy My Little Pony variants. I didn't want to get into that No, on, we'll on do this. a separate thing on uh, I don't international versions. Because the collect. colors are different, right? They are. A lot of things are different What about, about the, them. the butt symbols? Some of the symbols are different. Some of the colors are different. Some of the poses are different. Do they have uh, accents? <sighs> no. Um, but no, there's, there's Greek My Little Pony, Argentinian ones, there's, there's European ones, and they're all slightly, they all have their own flavor, different colors, and all kinds of, it's crazy. Wow. I have a few, I don't collect variants from international variants, I have a few. Well, you've got to finish domestic first. Uh, yeah, and there's no finishing, it's never happening. Um, she I keep has getting, I keep of getting derailed, I am so sorry guys, I keep really. I'd like to on. know what it's like, like, um, you know how we have flea markets and stuff here, where they have boot sales? Yeah. Um, in the UK, I'd love to know. Our, our Pope, Georgia, we're going to ask you a question, and people watching us on YouTube are going to have no idea. Well, I'll read the answer. Um, are vintage ponies easy to come by? Can you find them in, um, you know, boot sales or flea markets, if they have flea markets? 
or um, secondary stores? Can, can you find them over there? They're easy to find. I'd love to know that. Yeah, I don't. Uh, they. What's cool about it is that they made their own stuff. They had their own releases, so it's not like they were Who trying. Who put them out over there? You're putting me on the spot. A lot of different companies. There's a yeah. company called Nirvana, I think. El Greco was one in Greece. There were all kinds of little companies all over the world that did it. Um, and some of them, the plastic is very bad. Probably Hasbro as well in the UK, though, because oh, Hasbro, sure. did, Hasbro did G.I. Yeah. Joe action for um, Just like Fun School, G.I. Joe's are made India. of absolutely, ter yeah. absolutely terrible plastic. The same thing happened with My Little Pony. And there's some variants that uh, are, are so weird and specific because they discolor or change color over time or other things happen to them. Um, yeah. Tara absolutely will take pictures. Um, all oh, of her, all of her ponies are actually in storage now because we're going through a transition time with moving and stuff. Yeah, we're in the process of moving, so a lot of this but, stuff um, was already packed. There's definitely <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll grab some screenshots of oh, some boy. of the uh, yeah. I've got some cool stuff. Video. Um, I keep getting derailed. I'm so sorry. Um, Baby Ember. Yeah, Listen and Fun. So if you're a fan of GI Joe, you know about Listen and Fun Tripwire, and you could buy it's just like a little play pack where you get a pony and a tape to listen to. And in Ember's Dream, Ember has a nice little, cute little story, and it came with this adorable little pony. And what's strange is that in some releases, Ember was called Amber on the tape itself. Everything else in the audio, on the packaging, it all says Ember's Dream, but the tape itself, the label on the tape says Amber's Dream. So that is a Was it a misprint? Yes. Was it, That's were they a mistake. trying? That is a, Who knows? That is a QC that is problem. A, that is a Hasbro problem. Because if it was yeah. Ember everywhere else, and just on that, that is a quality control issue. So, um, so just a little more about my baby Ember. I just really want to keep talking about her. Um, <laughs> so baby Ember, my baby Ember being all blue, I decided there were no boy ponies at the time. So I just decided that my baby Ember was a boy. Oh. He was all blue. It makes sense, right? Yeah. So my baby Ember is a boy, even though Ember, the character of Ember is supposed to be a girl. And they didn't start doing boy ponies until much later when they did the big brother ponies Steamer. and stuff. Steamer is one of them. I got mine in Cleveland. Not kidding. Not that's not, not a joke. Kidding. That is not a joke. I we got, were on a trip. I got my steamer in Cleveland. <laughs> Where um, else do you get steamer? <laughs> that's now we're really off the rails. Um, Georgia said uh, yes and no. They're about finding ponies uh, in in Ireland. Um, they're harder to find in Ireland itself, but um, she gets them from groups online, and uh, and she uses a term that we use all the time. So she's obviously a toy collector. She said uh, in the UK you can find them in the wild, which. The wild is secondary stores, it, free out, markets, blah, blah, out, out there. About. <laughs> not, Which not is how we like to find things. We yes. are the wild. You know, <laughs> this store the is the wild. We are the wild. Yes, oh, I love Lord. it. So, yeah. So, I, my baby Amber holds a special place in my heart because it was the, the most special pony that I ever got as a kid. Uh, the first baby pony and, like, the, the ultimate baby pony for, for me. If, if you woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and said, who's the best baby pony? Sorry, sorry guys, but I would say, I would say baby Amber. So that's my little story about my mail away baby Ember. I'm listening to fun. We can't forget about listening. So we're still talking about mail away, and you talk about finding um, steamer in Cleveland. <laughs> uh, that trip specifically, we found yes. a couple ponies while we were out we and about hunting. We were at Big Fun in Cleveland. Uh, yep. And uh, it was a great trip. This was many years ago. Yep. That's the same trip that I got my Hollywood at. That's why I was bringing this I up. I guess I could. I was trying to be chronological with my life. Just jump. Just bounce around. I was trying to be chronological. I'm going to forget who I talked about and who I didn't. Um, I have a little cheat sheet back here, so I don't forget what I'm saying. Um, but while we're talking about Cleveland, um, let's bring out what is probably the coolest mail away. It's gotta be the, it's gotta be the coolest piece I own. I'm gonna go to camera too because this is just too good to not have a close up of. It's a good story too. Um, I'm not a mint inbox collector. It's just not my deal. I want to play with my toys. I want to pull them out and and check them out and look at them. Um, I'm a little cheesy. I almost feel like Toy Story is real. So these guys kind of hang out and run around when I'm not around. Um, Hollywood's not having that luxury. She is sealed up in her bag. Now, Hollywood is very special. I'm going to zoom in or try to a little bit there. She's really special because she's something called a flutter pony. Now, you can see these things are her wings here. And unlike a regular uh, Pegasus-style pony, um, they're not molded into her body. They're a separate uh, piece that snaps into... A little oh my god that looks very yeah very easy to break it, they are incredibly easy to break and that is why these ponies are so incredibly rare in any kind of decent condition um, my flutter pony I got one in a birthday pack for a birthday it was five ponies in a pack 
and one of them was a flutter pony. That's how they release the new stuff. They give you like a little taste in like a party pack, and then you can buy the other ones separately. Um, so that birthday set came with a flutter pony, and I played the hell played the hell out of that thing. Broke the wings off like two days after I got it. Wow. They're made of the thinnest. I, I wish you guys could see this it's a like little better. It's like thin blow molded plastic. It's very thin iridescent blow molded plastic. And um, what's cool about Hollywood, you can see those little magenta tabs. Where am I pointing? Right there. So the original uh, Flutter Ponies came with the wings attached to their backs. They would break instantly. They finally got the hint that that was a bad idea. So they started making it so you could pull the wings out. Mm. So in, in, in uh, Hollywood's case, these little magenta tabs, you could snap them into her back and then pull them out again. Whereas um, that original pony that I had gotten in that party pack, whose name escapes me right now. Wow. Um, um, they so were actually attached to the back. So your flutter ponies that you have that are loose. Yeah. We could have someone 3D print like bat wings. They they do make they do make <laughs> repro, dragon wings. They, so people out there do it. They do make repro uh, repro wings and stuff. I'm like that. thinking about a specific person. <laughs> <laughs> they would be very hard. It's hard for me to get a good shot of her. There you go. Um, so I'm gonna look at my notes real fast. Um, Hollywood was a mail-away to coincide with the My Little Pony, the movie. Now, My Little Pony, the movie, I'm going to put it back on camera one. So Tara said that she had a few flutter ponies, and the button makes the wings move. So it yes. had an action. Thank you. I was getting to the action, yes. Yeah. You could snap the wings, in, or in the case of uh, the very early ones, they were they were actually attached to these. So they got to be hard to find, uh, complete the early ones. Flutter ponies are ridiculous in general. Um, like I said, the very early ones had them, they weren't molded in, they were still separate pieces, but they were, they were stuck in there. You couldn't pull them out. Yeah. Um, literally you'd put, push the button twice. And if your finger slipped off the button, you broke it. Like there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So flutter ponies with their wings intact are super rare. Um, flutter ponies with their original early flutter ponies with their wings still in place are super rare. So this reminds um, me, um, when I was a kid, I think like 83, G.I. Joe put out styrofoam gliders. And I remember taking it out of the box, <laughs> it's just thin styrofoam. Yep. And assembling it, putting the little, um, as soon as I put the tail fin in, it cracked yeah. the styrofoam. You, you probably broke it putting it together. I did. Yeah. And then you go out and you throw it <laughs> once, and if it doesn't land in the grass, it's if it, hit, it hits cement, I, I just remember breaking yep. it the first yep. day I had it. So they're yep. very hard to find yep. in good shape. Now. I, I guarantee, if I'm remembering correctly, um, there's so many pony names floating around in my head right now. I think the one I keep referencing is named Yum Yum. She came from a birthday pack. It was a, It's called like the It's My Birthday. And what you got in that set was one of each of that year's new like style ponies. Oh, wow. So you got a flutter pony. You and got then they would a, release them individually after that? Yeah. Well, not those ponies. Those specific ponies were only available in that pack. Oh, my but, God. But those type... Like, for example, um, Yum Yum was the Flutter Pony. Oh, then they would do other Flutter Ponies. Yes, that, then there was an entire run of Flutter oh Ponies. Oh, my God. So yeah. the pack ponies had to be harder to find than the single release ponies. Uh, they were so mass produced. Um, oh, okay. Then again, I mean, My Little Pony is so crazy right now. I didn't feel at all bad talking about my, my simple little mail aways because everything is rare all of a sudden. Like, well, can every you imagine being a, a mitten box collector? Um, I wonder no. if Georgia <laughs> collects uh, on card or, or in box. I know. We have friends, Maria. Um, our friend Maria is a huge, Jerry Maria Maria, yeah. is a huge My Little Pony and I, fan, and I know she does cartage. She does international stuff. I can't. It's too much. Well, I um, like the idea of, of displaying <laughs> loose complete. Poor Hollywood stuck in that bag. Yeah. So we were so, in Cleveland. Yes, we were in Cleveland. We were in Cleveland, and while we were out there, um, how can I help you with the name of the store? I don't remember. Um, while we were out there, we did go to Big Fun. I'm sorry. We went to a couple different stores, yep. and um, while we were in one of the shops, the gentleman said, hey... There's another store just up the road. Uh, Star Pop was the name of the shop. There's a store I called. If it's still around. There's a store called. I believe so. There's a store called Star, uh, store, Star Pop right up the road. I think he's closed today. But here's his cell phone number. Give him a buzz and and see if he'll come in. This gentleman came. And they kind of. They were very nice to us because yeah. they knew we were um, serious collectors. <laughs> collectors and also, uh, you know, toy dealers. I think we were dealers at the time, weren't we? I, if it was within the last ten years, then yeah, I guess we were. Um, but they were very, they were, everybody was very cool to us. And this guy specifically, the guy from star pop, uh, whose name escapes me, was amazing. He came in on his day off. He l just gave us free reign of the store. He took us down into the basement where he keeps his storage. Now I would um, never let a customer dig in our back room. I mean, if, 
if somebody was came very well recommended from a friend of a friend, maybe I would at least yeah, like. But most of that open. stuff's not processed or priced. Listen, or... I God bless him. He was amazing. Super nice guy. Um, super nice guy. I don't guy. remember his name. I cannot this remember was his name. Over a decade. This ago. had to have been ten years, or probably more than ten years. Yeah. I don't think we were in business yet. Um, it had to be more than ten years ago. And I wasn't, you know, I was shopping for My Little Pony, but I knew that they were always hard to find. Whenever we would go out hunting, he would always find a ton of G.I. Joe stuff, and I would get one pony if I was lucky. So when I walked in and saw this, Hollywood, sitting on his shelf, I liked the dyed. And he... It was right around your birthday as well. It was. We always go on a big, try to go on a big trip around my birthday in September, and this was yeah, the I ultimate. get a birthday day, she gets a birthday month. I mean, it's fair, right? Um... So I saw this on the shelf, and I said, I, I absolutely have to have it. And he wasn't sure at first if he wanted to sell it. And I understand why he felt that way, because this is a super amazingly crazy rare piece. Um, but he sold it to, to us, to Justin, uh, for my birthday. And um, ten plus years later, she's still here in her bag. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about her. So Hollywood came out um, in, in prep for the My Little Pony, the movie. Um, which, oh, I'm dating myself. It came out in 86, 86, um, in June of 86. The movie absolutely bombed, but before it came out, um, they released, uh, Hollywood. Was it released in theaters? Yeah. Oh my God. It was a theatrical release. I'm so, so jealous. So, My Little Pony, the movie came out in June of 1986. Yep. Transformers, the movie came out in, I believe, August of 1986, and they both bombed horribly. And because of that, G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe movie went direct. That's so messed up. Went direct to, to That's consumer. That's so not fair. I remember being yeah. confused after seeing Transformers and G.I. Joe was like, now come into TV. And I was like, wait, wh why? Yeah. Because they killed Optimus Prime. Yes. It was not a good not a good plot. Um, well, they did a similar thing in the movie. The, the Dream Castle gets smoozed in the movie. Smoozed? Like somebody talks to it? Like, hey, no. Dream Castle? So... So let me let me finish about Hollywood and then we'll talk a little bit about the hor horribleness of the movie. Um, Hollywood is aptly named because the movie was coming out and it was going to be a great big Hollywood production. Um, they actually had a contest surrounding the movie. Uh, decide who wins, who, who saves Ponyland for the movie. Well, it turns out the Flutter Pony saved Ponyland. And Hollywood was a big tip off on that because she was a Flutter Pony that was being released specifically for um, a movie tie-in. She was a mail away only. You couldn't get her any other way. Um, this specimen that I have is absolutely beautiful. She is uh, mint beyond compare. Her wings are actually in their own little cardboard card, which is taped to the outside of her bag. She is beautiful. She is the... Alex, Alex said spoilers. About, uh, Amazon, about Amazon Prime. About Optimus Prime. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's there, a joke there. The there Amazon is, a, there Prime, is an Amazon Optimus Prime, Prime joke there. I yeah. never thought about that. I've seen, it's actually a cartoon. It's like a, a Transformer made of Amazon boxes. Taking over the world. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Hollywood is amazing. I have to say <sighs> she is probably the coolest pony. And, and not to, not to discount Hollywood. personality-wise? No, just this, this piece. This, this beautiful little I bag. I think Rapunzel would disagree. I don't have a Rapunzel in my collection. Okay. So we're if just talking about your finish, collection. Let right. me finish my yeah. sentence. Uh, I think that Hollywood is probably the coolest pony, uh, rarest, probably the rarest, because of her condition, being in a bag. Um, everything My Little Pony is absolutely insane. Um, you mentioned Rapunzel. Rapunzel is considered the holy grail of we My Little Ponies. We just saw one recently We sell. just saw a Rapunzel in her mail-away. She's also a mail-away. A, a mail-away Rapunzel in her bag do $5,800 on eBay. Yeah. Um, I... I could have gotten one for $300 not that long ago, and you I said, your nose nah, up it. that's too much money. I'm a toy well, dealer. I can't spend that again, kind of money. Again, toys have gone ridiculous. There's people, so here's the thing. <laughs> it's not just pony collectors collecting rare ponies now. There yeah. are people that just collect rare yes. toys, and yeah. Rapunzel is the grail for she's, ponies, kind of like Scratch is yes, for turtles. Exactly. Um like who is a Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander for GI Joe? Yeah, maybe? I, but Rapunzel. Uh, Rapunzel's a little different because uh, well, ma uh, Cobra Commander was a mail away, right? Yep. Um, so was Rapunzel. She was a mail away. Now, unlike Cobra Commander, she came much later in in the run. Uh, I believe she was eighty nine or ninety. Don't quote me on that. She was much later, and a lot of the stuff is from much. A lot of the really rare pony stuff is much later, like because Scratch. They, yeah, like Nobody Scratch. wanted it. Nobody yeah, cared about it. Nobody played with it. it. They were yeah. done with the line. Um, and it kind of went away. Whereas a uh, Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander is the original, the first Cobra Commander. The, the... yeah. Well, then there's like a gold. There's there's yeah. there's other stuff that's worth money. I'm sure Hollywood's worth money. Yeah. Oh, in this um, bag, gold I don't even. Gold Steel Brigade I don't even from want to look. 
free. I don't. Well, I don't want to know what my ponies are worth because then I would want to sell them, and I don't, no. I don't want to do that. It's not about the money. No, it's really not. So um, Hollywood, I'm gonna nestle her back in there, right behind Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know where to go next. Let's see. Hollywood is just too cool. Um, yeah, I'll talk about this poster. This is really neat. You guys are gonna love this. So I don't just collect, when I collect something, I don't just collect the toys or like in D&D, &D, the books. I collect all the weird crap that goes along with it It's the most fun well. stuff. Um, and I'll get into that in a second with this weird little bag up here. Um, this is an incredibly rare poster that I didn't know was incredibly rare until literally yesterday. <laughs> um, I looked it up because I thought it was interesting. Justin, can you grab one side of it? Yeah. Just so we can get a good Rip. shot. Yeah, amazing. Rip. Um, this is a really cool My Little Pony poster. I'm trying to match you. There you go. Um, and you can just see there's like some cool ponies on there. You got the show stable it's in the nice background. Art. It's really cute art. This sort of soft watercolor art um, was always the box art. The, the box art and the, the card art for ponies. Um, what's really cool about this poster is that you couldn't go out and buy it. Um, you couldn't even get it um, through mail order. You couldn't get this poster unless Hasbro screwed you over. Like, let me read this. You ready? Thank you for being such an understanding friend. From the back of the poster. Dear Mom, yes, Tara, we are going to frame it. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, dear My Little Pony friend, by now you should have received your My Little Pony items. We are sorry they took so long to arrive. You see, we received so many requests from Pony Pals like you that we weren't able to handle all of them at first. But everyone at the ranch worked extra hard to round up the ponies so no one would be disappointed. To thank you for being so patient and understanding, we are sending you the beautiful poster you'll find inside. Along with the poster, we've included five free horseshoe points as a special bonus. Again, thanks for being such an understanding friend. Love from My Little Pony. Um, a special note to parents. We really are really, really, really sorry. <laughs> wow. So this is like... Yeah. Um... This is like what the post office needs to send everybody whose packages are late right yes. now. Yes. So um, this is from 1985. Um, I tried to look this up and I could not find a lot of information about it. It seems that every once in a while Hasbro would just get really backed up fulfilling their mail order uh, horseshoe point um, orders. And they would send you one of these awesome posters as an apology. Um, this is too cool. Uh, this one came from a lady named Jean. We bought a collection from not too long ago. She had a near complete collection of uh, strawberry shortcake, which is going to end up on a from Metro to yeah. right now. It's in the museum right now. So Harold and then uh, Georgia both talk about this, and this is this is what hap is happening with um, with nostalgia and with toy lines getting a new life. Um, Harold said that My Little Pony has a Ghostbuster pony, a set of Dungeons and Dragons ponies, a Power Ranger pony, and an Optimus Prime pony right now. And that's because um, all the all the stuff we grew up with, the '80s are back, and they're being reinvented, and they're cross pollinating. Um, if you think about it, there's a lot of Masters of the Universe stuff that's doing the same thing. Uh, it's it's bringing hopefully new people into the fold to go find the old stuff. Yeah, uh, it's exciting. It's really cool. Um, and Heather said, "Don't forget Doctor Who's because there's actually a Doctor Who pony in." the new Friendship is Magic uh, world view, who has an hourglass on his rump as his cutie mark. Uh, um, Georgia said that there's a Stranger Things Applejack. And Stranger Things is all things 80s. And it's, I'm surprised 11. Yeah, it, it actually comes upside down in the packaging. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool and weird. Now, are they, are they G1 molds? I believe the specifically the Stranger Things one is. Uh, it's an Applejack mold, like like Georgia said. I believe the colors are strange. I think it's like white and blue, like an upside down kind of weird reverted colors. Um, there is a whole new resurgence of retro styled My Little Ponies. Of oh, retro styled everything. Are you uh, kidding and, me? And they are, if they're not the original molds, they are very reminiscent. Yeah. But there are some key differences. Good. The coloring is just a little bit different. Um, I, but if you don't know what to look for, you could be easily tricked. Yeah. Um, some of the ponies come with a scent that did not originally come scented. Like Stinkor? Well, kind of, I don't want to say like Stinkor, but yeah, kind of like Stinkor. There were some scented ponies, um, vintage did they smell style. Like glue? They did not smell like glue, and that's a terrible joke. Ponies are not glue. So when you read that, <laughs> I, I never put ponies together, and I know, you know, the American Old West is about horses and like, you know. Yeah. You know There's a few horses involved. When you're like, oh, down at the ranch, the ponies are getting taken care of, I never saw ponies as a ranch. So. They were always like fantastical. I, I, they were otherworldly to me. They are otherworldly. And let's, 
Uh, Mallory just asked, do I have Cherry's Jubilee? Um, yes, Mallory, I have both versions of Cherry's Jubilee. Oh, both versions. Both versions. Um, not here today because she's not incredibly rare unless I've missed something. Ponies have gone so crazy recently. I could have things that are worth thousands of dollars and not even realize. Um, where was I going with what I was just saying? Ranch. Yeah, so as a kid, before... <laughs> Hi, your ponies! Before the cartoons and before the movie and all that stuff, I had nothing but, like, the card art on the back and the little stories about the ponies. And in some cases, because I got them at yard sales and stuff, I didn't even have that. I didn't know their names. I just made up my own shit because I had imaginative... I was an imaginative, imaginative little kid. You're playing with your ponies. They need a name. Um, so my ponies were never, like, Western either. They were fantastical. There were unicorns and uh, Pegasus, and, and they had odd colors. They were not yeah. ranch ponies. Mm. They didn't get ridden by people, really, except Megan. Megan was special. Now, was Megan... <laughs> did Megan... Did she wear a cowboy hat? And like, no. Yeehaw. I have a Megan right here, as a matter of fact. She's not wearing a cowboy hat. She's wearing a pink and white dress and little pink shoes and a little pink bow. Okay. This is my Megan from when I was a kid. She's back here hanging out in Paradise Estate with Sundance. But see, how about Sundance. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, like, that makes me think of the West. Um, but yeah, my ponies were never Western, but obviously they lived on a ranch. Um, there's not a lot of canon when it comes to My Little Pony. They just sort of threw shit together, just like but Amber. they had a castle. They and did. a dragon. Yes. Who Spike started out as a villain, by the way. I did not know that. He's just a like dragon. Smurfette. They talk about Spike really well in the... Um... In the Toys That Made Us episode. And he's now, he's now, uh, he's one of the only a few characters that have made it from vintage into modern My Little Pony, Applejack being another one. Um, but Spike was originally a villain. He was the, he was the little sidekick of one of the villains from the movie. Oh. Or the special. I get the movie and the special confused. What else you got up here? Um, so, moving forward in time, um, we're up to 86, 87. The, um, the movie has come out and it tanked, but just like G.I. Joe, it ended up being aired on television. They did do a cartoon called My Little Pony and Friends that came out um, 86, 87. Um, and one of the stars of that show was... Was the sound, was the, was the theme song around in the commercials before it was in the TV show? My Little Pony. You know, it was a, yes. That was a commercial yes. song. Yes, that was a commercial song and then it also became the song for the show. Yeah. My Little Pony and Friends. So it was yeah. kind of like... It's like the G.I. Joe theme song was around before the toys even were. Yeah, so the My Little Pony song was for the commercials. The show theme was a little different. Okay. Through the woods and across the stars, where the something? <laughs> I don't remember the words. <laughs> I um, wish I had, had learned it. I was... My Little Pony and Friends. Yeah, no, it's not the same as the song from the commercials. Who are the end friends? Um, so, another a fun fact. Just like Garfield and Friends was half Garfield, half some other crap you didn't care about, same idea. Uh, you had My Little Pony in half of the episode, and the other half was either like Moon Dreamers or Glow Worms. Oh, they didn't take up a full else. half hour episode? Nope. It oh, was what only, a chip. There were 65 episodes, but they were short. Oh, what a chip. Yeah. Um, so, one of the stars of uh, one of the episodes, she only ever appeared in one episode, um, and a lot of the ponies that were toys never were even on the show. So, it's not unusual for a pony to not appear on the show or to only appear once or twice. It's like G.I. Joe. Um, yeah. Because they kept introducing new characters. They tried their best in the cartoons to introduce the things so kids would want to go buy them. Yeah. But they just couldn't cram everything into That's the show. That's the same thing with My Little Pony. Um, in the case of this one that I'm going to bring up next, I'm going to put her on camera too so you guys can get a real good look at her. Um, this is Mimic. Now she has, for whatever reason, become one of the most rare ponies. Uh, she was not a mail away. She was just a standard release. You could go to a store and buy her, no problem. Um, it's believed that she had a very low production run for whatever reason, and because she did appear in one of the episodes, um, it's typically believed that she got bought up really quickly, because the kids, just like you said with G.I. Joe stuff, kids recognized her, they wanted her to come home with them, and because of that, there are not that many of her All right. left. let's talk about her real quick. Let's talk about her. She has a unicorn. She does, she is a unicorn. And, 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 and jewel eyes. She is a twinkle eye pony. Now, I mentioned them earlier, um... Uh, 86, did I say she was from? Um, yeah, 86 is when the Twinkle Eye Ponies came out. Now, if you can get a good look at the eyeball there. She doesn't have a regular eye. Like, let's take a look at this pony. You can see that regular, painted-on, beautiful little eye. 
Um, Her makeup is on point. <laughs> On fleek. This this one has a green gem. It's sort of iridescent as her eye. It's a little creepy. Um, it is a little creepy, but they were cool because they were extra magical. At least that's what I told myself as a kid, so I didn't have nightmares and stuff. Awesome. Um, they are really cool. Now she also has really colorful hair. Yeah. That's another uh, feature that a lot of the ponies in the later years came up with. She's like a pride pony. She's got four different colors in her hair. Um, her name is Mimic, and her symbol is a parrot there because parrots presumably parrots can mimic human speech. Um, there's not any explanation other than that ever given for any other symbols and all that kind of stuff. They just look cool. <laughs> Walk the plank, Sailor! Yeah, so in, uh, in her episode, Mimic was very sick, and the other ponies had to... Yeah, listen, just because they're all brightly colored and have horns and wings does not mean that some serious shit did not go down. Uh, our reviews are PG, um, <laughs> just so you know. I hope your kid isn't watching this. Uh, we apologize for the language. <laughs> But we do curse. We, you know, I we, get very excited when I'm talking we, uh, about toys. We so talk I, about toys the way we talk about them to customers here, and oftentimes we yeah. children aren't uh, here. Hi, Freddie. <laughs> if you guys were in the store, I'd be cussing just as much. Well, so we would, just, if, we if there was a kid standing in front of me, I would try not to. It, uh, but I, I've been known to drop a couple choice words. I have a potty mouth, this. and uh, I read an article that people who cuss a lot are more intelligent than everyone else. No, it's so just I'm super right smart, words. and I cuss all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, so Mimic um, is one of uh, another really cool pieces in my collection. She is a Twinkle Eye Pony, like I said. Um, Mark yeah. got my reference. Yeah, you were imitating Polly from G.I. Joe. Wah, wah. Shipwrecks. Yeah. Um, Tara said it was pure passion. It's totally acceptable to language. Thank pure you, Tara. passion. Pure passion. That's all. It's, that, we should actually have a shirt. <laughs> Farpoint. Pure passion. Is that like Pure Energy, that song? No. Um, no, well, bad I, joke, Sailor. What was I babbling about? I'm going know. off. No, I was saying something important. About her being sick. Oh, yes. So the episodes were not all fun and games and stuff. There was a lot of darkness, a lot of Midnight Castle, all kinds of creepy stuff. Um, the Dream Castle was actually smoothed, they called it, in the movie. And after that, they all had to go to Paradise Estate, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, Paradise Estate? There was no more Dream Castle after that. Oh. Yeah. They couldn't unschmooze it? I don't think it got unschmoozed. Oh, and my it's, God. It's smooth, it's, I think. It's not schmooze. Um... <laughs> uh, Georgia said that I should look into the twinkle eye backstory how they get their eyes dark stuff I, I will Georgia thank Ooh. you if if you if you know some insider info please drop it in the comments because I'm going to be honest I do not know the backstory um, what I do know is that this pony came to me not that long ago she's awesome um, she is a really nice color really brightly colored all of the twinkle eye ponies are really cool especially did they save her or did she die in the episode did I'm she sorry have this no she did not die um, she was really sick and the only way to make her better was to find the magical golden horseshoes. And once they, the other ponies found the magical golden, golden horseshoes, they gave them to Mimic, and she got better, and she was able to utilize the magic of the horseshoes and do magical twinkly pony things. Was she the um, first of the Twinkle Eye magical ponies? No. Um, she's actually from the second series of Twinkle Eye ponies. There were Twinkle Eye ponies prior to um, her set. Um, but I have to say, of all the Twinkle Eye ponies... My favorite one, um, she's probably one of my favorites, just her coloring is really cool. She's just really unique looking. Um, that pose that she's in is very interesting. She sort of um, has one leg up, as you can see there. Um, you know, when ponies first came out, there was only that one pose, just like this one. They all just stood straight oh forward. Uh, our our pointed, friends. Pointed forward. You said pure energy. I did say pure energy. As a throwaway. And I immediately about thought the of the '90s pure energy song. And I thought of Spock because he's sampled in the song, and of course. And of course, Mark, Mark knew Information Society, who were big Star Trek fans, did that from that song. It's why Spark, Spock was quoted in the song. So, do you want to talk about dark storylines, Georgia? Thank you so much for throwing this out there. Um, the Twinkle Eye Ponies were slaves in a gem mine. When they came out of the sunlight, they were blind because they'd been underground until some gems got lodged in their eyes and they could then see Oh, again. my God. Wow. So they have eyes <laughs> underneath of the gems? I don't want to talk about this anymore. They were slaves <laughs> in a gem? No. Slaves for who? Stop. Probably a bad guy or somebody. Like, was Listen, it like, was there's it... bad guys in My Little Pony. Oh, my God. Yeah, who do you think is the main villain? As a matter of fact... I don't know. Gargamel? So... Purple if, Pie Man? If you had to guess... What famous 80s actor did a voice in the My Little Pony movie? Who would you guess it was? Now, we've got Cloris Leachman in the My Little Pony movie doing a voice. Sherman Helmsley. We have, um, her name just went right out of my head. Um, Cloris Leachman and 
Madeline Kahn, both did voices. Who else do you think? Sherman Helmsley. It was not Sherman Helmsley. Keep guessing. You're close. Gary Coleman. You're so close. Oh, my God. Gary Coleman is so close. Keep going. Uh, yeah. Guys, if you don't know the answer, please comment in the comments. I want to hear your funny your funny answers. A, a fairly famous, a very famous. Emmanuel Lewis. You're so close. Really? You're so close. Todd Bridges. I don't know who Todd Bridges is. You are so close. In between Emmanuel Lewis and Gary Coleman, you are so close. I can't think of anybody else like them. <laughs> Paul Rubens. Not, again, you're close. Same genre. If you took Paul Rubens and Gary Coleman and combined them into a human being, you would get this person. Nicholas Cage. No. <laughs> Danny DeVito. Wow. Danny DeVito did a voice, yes. <laughs> Paul, no, I'm sorry. But Paul Rubens plus Gary Coleman equals Danny DeVito, and you can't convince me I, otherwise. I don't know about that. You can't convince I, me otherwise. Okay. All right, so we're getting a little off topic here. Um, but uh, let me just make sure. I, I'm going to look at my cheat sheet to make sure I've gone over everything I wanted to say. <laughs> Dina said Dana Plato <laughs> because she was following my uh, Todd Philip Todd Bridges he was the he was Willis. He was the brother, and she was the yeah, girl. Yeah. Right? Now the world don't move Keep to singing. the beat of just one drum. Keep singing while I make sure I got Might be right for you, here. might right. not be right for some. A man right. is born. He's a man of means. Long come to. Thank you, Heather. I have a guest. Nothing but the jeans. All right, we're done singing. All right. Um. All right. So we're gonna fast forward a couple years. Ricky Schroeder, f that dude. Um, I think the last pony I talked about was uh, 86, which was Mimic. We're moving on to 88, 89. Um, Danny DeVito is close to Coleman and Lewis because of height. Danny DeVito is like four She's being seven. a heightist. I am being a heightist. They're very short people. And Danny DeVito is a short people as well. Okay. Um, all right, so moving right along. Um, we have a uh, year seven, which was 1988 to 1989 in pony years. We have a really cool set of ponies. These, again, were just mail aways. You couldn't get them any other way. Um, they are called uh, Pearl Eyes Baby Ponies. I'm going to go to camera, camera two, two just so you guys can get here. a really good look at these beautiful... Do you have any beautiful... flocked ponies in your collection? I yours? absolutely do. I have yes. tons of flocked ponies. Um, these two little guys, ladies I should say, um, are Pearl Eyes. Now you can clearly see that they do have like a shimmer. That's not just the trick of yeah, the light. Yeah, there's a reflection of, on their eyes. They are... They are standard ponies covered with a really cool pearlescent sort of sheen here. Um, now, what's interesting about these is that um, they are basically, how do I put this nicely? They're just repaints of existing ponies. These ponies were already released in like year two or three as baby ponies. Um, they just took some more of those ponies and slapped some pearlescent paint on them and called it a day, called them mail orders. Did they change their butt? symbols there is nothing different about these ponies from their original release okay except um in the case of baby glory which i have right here baby glory is um originally a white bodied pony who is now blue because of the bluish color pearlescent sheen um also you you know the camera's not doing justice to the pearlescent paint uh it looks way cooler in person it's a little more iridescent in person than uh it's giving away on camera it just looks um, shiny on camera yeah instead it doesn't have the depth it has if you look at it right here it's they look it looks like nail polish yeah it's very pearly um it has like a white sheen with it has a lot of depth that's a really good way to put it um so baby glory is here is a little different than her original release original baby glory was white in, in uh, body as i said um and did have multi-colored hair um like a, a pinkish along with like a purple color um, and her symbol on her butt was in multiple colors you can see this one just has plain purple hair because all the rest had just plain single colored hair and single colored uh image i guess just because it makes it easier for the pearlescent to go over um, other than that the poses are all absolutely identical um to those original releases they just um, i'm gonna say it again they just slapped some pearlescent paint on these bad boys and called it a day so apparently Rhea Perlman <laughs> was in the Pony movie as well. I wonder if that's where oh, her and Danny DeVito met. I think she was. I think they were already married. Oh. I'm not sure. That's, that's, that's a handsome couple. Listen, they are perfect for each other, and they're adorable. They're still married. They are, right. they are adorable. Okay. Uh, they're adorable. Just like these little ponies. Rhea Perlman and Danny DeVito are adorable. We're going to rename these ponies. Just like these little ponies. Um, this is Baby Cotton Candy here in this very... Um... Hit me. What? I take a nickel. What? Hit me. What? Nothing. What? So it's a Danny DeVito reference. What? Aww. Um, so uh, I love the pose that this pony is in. She's just like very proud looking with like a little, her little head up. 
Oh, oh you can see the shine like, really well there. Yeah. It's, they look good. They're, they're weirdly shiny. They look almost cell shaded when you look at them in, a, in like that. They're they're really cool. The effect here is really neat. Um, What's the backstory of Pearls and Bowies? They probably were like running from slavers and fell into pearlescent <laughs> mud. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Listen, I, I I'm gonna say this again. I'm gonna put it on camera one because I I want you guys to see my sincere face. I love My Little Pony. Uh, I played with my My Little Ponies incessantly as a child. They were far and away, other than dolls that my mother had made for me as a kid, they were by far and away my favorite toys. Barbies were cool and I had a ton of them, but My Little Pony was was it for me. G.I. Joe for Justin, it was for me it was My Little Pony. But I was not hugely into the TV show. I may have watched it two or three times. Wow. Uh, I, See, I was I, I was all across the board with G.I. Joe. It was the cartoon. It well, was the comics. it came out. The cartoon came out the same time as the toys. Or, or Yes. That yeah, they not, came out handy. Yeah, down. not so with, with My Little Pony. I was deeply invested in My Little Pony before the cartoon. I mean, it was it was a, it was a comic. It was a special, a cartoon special. Then it was a movie, which I, I didn't see the movie until like 10 years after it came out. Wow. I mean, we rented it from the... We had a VCR finally. And we rented it. I didn't. I didn't go to the theater and see that movie. Huh. Um, my pony stories were all things I made up. I didn't watch the show and like so mimic no, what they were there doing. There was no slavery in your ponies. There was no slavery. Nobody fell into any pits or, or, or gouged out their eyes or did anything. I'm shocked that, that that didn't happen. In my, those were my Barbies. My Barbies got up to some crazy crap. Um, Tara, I'm actually going to go on to that next because you because you uh, you asked that question. Tara, I'm guessing there were different variations of the baby buggy. Mine was white with a pink umbrella. Tara, I'm going to put these pearls and babies back, and we're going to talk about the baby buggy, which is so, so cool. So, yes, there were three different versions of um, the My Little Pony baby buggy. Um, the first one came out in 1984, and it came with Baby Cuddles, who is my second favorite baby pony after Baby Ember, of course. Um, in my head canon, they were siblings, but I'll, I'll leave that alone. No whips or chains, no Mark. There were no... Those were my Barbies. My Barbies... Who said this? Mark did. There were no... My Barbies got up to some crazy crap, but the ponies, there was no whips, chains, none of that crazy, no slavery, nothing crazy with my ponies. They were just pink and cute and awesome. Um, but yeah, so in 1984, um, the baby buggy came out. It was the exact same mold as this one, except it was a white body here, and then uh, the umbrella was a pale pink. Still came with a lace trim and a little heart uh, topper there, and it came with baby cuddles. Um, that same buggy was re-released a little later with something called a Betty by Eye baby cuddles. Oh, the uh, opium addicted ponies. Yes, you want to talk about creepy? The gemstone, the twinkle eye ponies are not creepy compared to the Betty by Eye. Hey. Ponies. <laughs> uh, now again, we I we just got out of the gem mine. I want to be really clear here. I love my they're, little ponies. They were the ponies with PTSD. <laughs> I am not. I'm not making fun. I love my little pony. But the, what they called Betty by Eye Ponies terrified me as a child. I hated them. You know the premise of a doll when you lay it to sleep, the eyes close, and when you open... You, They're like weighted, they have eyelids. Yeah, you, you lift it up and the eyes open and then you lay it down and the eyes close. Well, they made ponies like that. Um, first of all, the eyes look just like Christopher Reeve's eyes, if you guys are familiar with our Christopher Reeve bust. Oh, they people were, are, some people aren't going to get that reference at all. I'll we have a, a bust of Christopher Reeve that has glass eyes. <laughs> yes. The glass eyes on these ponies, uh, they, I'm sure they were plastic and not glass, but they had that like dimensional, creepy, like... You could see into you their You could see soul, into their souls. Or their, or their lack of soul. And then the little blinky eyelids, sometimes they'd get stuck up or down. Sometimes you one have, up and one down. Sometimes you have one up and one down, and the pony looks hey, like hey, yeah. You got some of that good pony feed? No, man. You got some smooths for me, baby. No, smooths. they they were creepy. <laughs> Thinking of Bonnie Tyler's video, I'm so glad I don't know what Mark is talking about. Um, yeah, so I was not turn around. No, I I know. Oh. I, I know, I assumed he meant that song, but I'm not sure why he's referencing it right now. <laughs> I think the video I read, his eyes are real big with light shining out of them or something. Oh, yeah, no, it, the opposite. These baby ponies, half the time the eyes wouldn't work correctly. Um, and God forbid you were a kid like me that took their ponies into the bathtub. Whatever the mechanism was behind the eyes, it must have been made of metal because they would end up crying rust. <laughs> 
Um, I had, yeah. So I only had two Betty That's by Eye ponies. That's much like Optimus Prime. Yeah, I only had two of the Betty by Eye ponies, and they were both gifts. One of them came in that birthday pack that I just mentioned earlier. It was that was the first Betty by Eye pony ever released, and the second one came in something called the My Little Pony purse. It was a cute little pink purse, and in, there's a little pocket in the front, and your little baby pony could lay in the pocket there. Um, like a little bed. It was cute. When you display your loose ponies, do you put like the five that would have come in the birthday set? Do you put them together? Absolutely. Great. Of course. Um, yeah, they came as a set. Of yep. course. All right. So the third version of the baby bundle. Yeah. Um, so yeah. The, so the second one came with that Betty by Eye baby cuddles. Other than that, it was totally the same, same molds and everything, except that pony was slightly different with the creepy eyes that cried, rusty, scary. Tina tears. said that is terrifying. Yeah, I, and it is. Yes. Um, Tara mentioned only her sea pon- seahorse ponies went into the tub. Uh, I loved my sea ponies to death. All I still of them have all did, of mine. which is why they are all gut yes. ones. They, the tail thing, right? They had a weighted tail so that they could float. The adults had a weighted tail so they could float in the tub. And the weight was just a metal weight in the bottom of the tail. Well, they had a hole in their head so that the, the water could get out. But even the slightest bit of water left behind would rust that tail weight. And rusty water would just pour out of your pony's head Ugh. like blood. It was, yeah, anyway. Ponies are creepier it's than like I remember. like swimming in the schuylkill. yeah. Um, so, the third version of the baby buggy, as you see here, is the princess baby buggy. You can tell that it's fancy because it has all this glitter and stuff. Um, it comes with a baby princess sparkle. Now, there was a princess... Oh, she's a diva. There was a princess sparkle pony, but she did not look anything like baby princess sparkle. That's one thing that I've noticed with ponies. Um, there is often what they call a mother and a baby. So, like, um, Moon Dancer, for example, there's a baby Moon Dancer. Cotton candy. There's a baby cotton candy. Are are, are, are they like prequels? Um, you know, I kind of... Or kinda, are they the kid of the mother? I had trouble with this when I was a kid. The way that they are presented is that they are the babies of the mothers, but there's no dads. But they're the same names. But they're the same did names. they have the same butt symbols? They did. Well, that... Sometimes it was smaller to fit on the smaller butt, but yeah. So that was a little confusing to me as a kid, but I never really let it bother me too much. Um... It's just a mini version of the bigger pony. So you like this one, you'll like the little one. But it's the, that bigger one's baby. Yeah. Not a baby version of the bigger one. Well, it's sort of up in the air. It's it's a little... Listen. Okay. How did you play with, with it? Were they... They were mom and, and, and okay. baby. Yeah, they were mom and baby. Always. Um, mom and baby. No weirdness, no dads, just mom and baby. Um, anyway, so let's uh, zoom in here on Baby Princess Sparkle. I think Cleveland was the dad of all of them. Cleveland was not the dad of all of them. <laughs> so there's two bulls standing on a hill. Stop. I don't know what you're about to say. And uh, no. a field of cows below. Stop. You're going to say something I've seen. Um, we're going to talk about Baby Princess Sparkle now. Now, Justin, you're absolutely right. She is a diva. Look at this adorable little baby. She has got light pink Damn, hair. Damn, look at her butt symbol. Dude. She has got... I love this pony. And this is not from my original collection when I was a little girl. I did pick this up um, maybe five or so years ago. Um, she is absolutely beautiful. White, minty, fresh whiteness there. She On the top of her head, she has a tiny glittery star symbol. Um, her butt symbol is a castle. I want to try to zoom in there. If you guys can... Yes, Immaculate Conception. That's what we're going Actually, for. Actually, he said Emasculate Conception <laughs> at first. And I was really confused. So I didn't repeat it, but it seems like it was just a spell uh, check error. So Heather has said that baby ponies are born from their mother's reflections. I'm totally into that. I don't know if that's canon. Again, I'm not hugely into My Little Pony canon, that little of it that exists. That's a beautiful butt symbol. Because I always played with my ponies in my own my own way. I did my own thing, so I kind of just ran with it. Um, baby Princess Sparkle is absolutely beautiful. Is her, that gold? Uh... Yeah, her butt symbol is gold <laughs> glitter. And wow. I don't know if you guys can see, but the turrets on the castle have a purple top. There is a less rare version that has a different color, more of a pinkish glitter. Okay. This one is the purple glitter, not the pink glitter. Just want to emphasize that. Um, she's beautiful with all of her glitter all over everything. Oh, she, she has, has a star on her head. She has a star on her head, as I mentioned earlier. Is that... Do any other ponies have that? Um, some ponies started coming... Um, you know, the longer the toy line went on, the they started running out of good ideas. So they just started doing all kinds of crazy crap. Um, there's ponies that smell like perfume. Twice there's, as fancy. There's twice as fancies, which I'll get to in a minute. 
Um, there's glitter symbols. There's like neon symbols. They started coming with um, ice cream sodas that they could drink by slurping them up in a straw. Oh, cool. They started having baby ponies that could wet themselves when you fed them. Oh, my God. Um, there was a lot. Baby tooth, first first tooth ponies. They started um, running out of ideas. So why do you have only the third version of this? Of this? I have the other two versions, too. Oh, this is just more rare. Yeah, this this set is crazy rare. It came out in 89, 90, I want to say. Um, yeah, 88, 89, rather. Um, so more toward the end of the run. The last year for um, G1 Ponies was 91. So um, she came out a little bit later on. Yeah. Um, again, Mark said it's a lot like G.I. Joe uh, when you talk about the later stuff. Throw yeah. just, they're just throwing stuff against the Mark, wall. Mark, exactly. You so, know, um, when, yeah. you, when you think of sci-fi, his brightly colored neon, they did that with My Little Pony. I think of Barbie and the Rockers. Sure. And all then G.I. Joe, all the sub-teams, Dino Hunters, and, yeah. uh, you know, they had, like, Mega Monsters. And yeah. we, I should do a later G.I. Joe, like, maybe 91 to 94 review. Um, so Brady, Baby Princess Sparkle, again, she is not, she doesn't seem to be oh, Princess, look at her in there. she doesn't seem to be Princess Sparkle's baby, but they have the same name. I feel like Hasbro really didn't care about the names Maybe sometimes. that's the family. Maybe it's um, like the Princess Sparkle yeah, family. Listen, if I had had her as a kid, that's how I would have played with it. Somewhere um, there's like I was very Johnny not, Princess Sparkle. No. That he's like, a, he's like a, the family black sheep. She came with a little cute comb shaped like a duck. You guys can see that. Why, why is it shaped like a duck? It, just because. Why not? Okay. Why wouldn't it be shaped like a duck? I don't know. Justin, she's a on. princess. Maybe it should be shaped like a <laughs> chalice or it something. It should have been shaped like a castle or something. But listen, it's whatever they had laying around. Um, she is just too cute. I love her. Um, <laughs> Heather said when you attend enough brony cons. That's right. Heather has gone to a lot of... Yes. Of Heather has gone to a ton of brony cons. Um, Baby Princess Sparkle just looks so freaking cute in there. <laughs> Mark wants me to do a Mega Marine review. I'm I need to complete to. them. I'm going to pull the box down. Um, I know I showed this off a little bit earlier. Oh, Mark just gave me a great idea of how to review G.I. Joe. I am going to put this on camera. By one. year. That's the best way to do it. It's kind of what I oh, tried to do here. Wow. It just didn't really work out too well. I tried to do that. It didn't really work out. Oh, um, Mark. Thank you for that inspiration. The box here, you can see, um, it's just showing baby Princess Sparkle and hanging out with all of her accessories. Um, she did come with a ribbon and a barrette. Unfortunately, I do not have either of those. But she is beautiful without. I love her, 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 uh, the tinsel in her hair. I'm really into that. I really think that it's really cool. Um, now that barrette is that she is beautiful. Um, it's literally this big. Is that? Uh, did they all come with ribbons or barrettes? So lots of ponies came with ribbons. Most of them, in fact, um, some of them only came with like a ribbon. Uh, like some of the mail aways only came with a few things. It's a piece of fabric. It's yes. It's very hard to find that kind of yes. stuff. Yes. But the barrette. It, it, to me, that is necessary for completeness. She, I'm not pretending. She's not complete. Okay. <laughs> not um, even but, a But that bit. barrette, that col is that specific to her? So some of the um, accessories were repeated. Um, to, to go back to the question you asked, most ponies came with a ribbon and a comb or a ribbon and a brush. Um, some of them came with a ribbon and whether it's a hair, a, a hairbrush or a comb, they would come with one of those as well as like a sticker. Those stickers, I actually yeah. forgot. I have a sticker book from when I was a kid with all my pony stickers still in there. Um, I was going to bring it in. I totally forgot. Dina wants to know, um, is My Little Pony why you have long hair? Did it inspire your hair? Not specifically, Dina, but I do think um, I do think a toy inspired my long hair. Um, there is a Barbie. I want to say she's not Malibu. Maybe she is Malibu Barbie. She had incredibly long um or was blonde it hair. Crystal Gale. Mark and Crystal Gale definitely had something to do with it. Um <laughs> There's some rec album covers of Crystal Gale with that hair, man. Um Malibu, I believe it was Malibu Barbie, um, had incredibly long blonde hair, like down to the floor. And then there was a skipper that went along with her who also had really long hair. Skipper. And a Ken doll who did not have really long hair, but they all had the same sort of neon and black camouflage swimsuits. Um, Sounds like G.I. Joe in 93. I had the whole set of those three, uh, Skipper, Barbie, and Ken. And uh, to this day, her I believe her hair definitely influenced me. Um, and then you got into like medieval. And then I got into medieval stuff. Yeah. And uh, then it was over. Because all I want to be in life is an elf. So, I mean, like, elves, the long hair, <laughs> me and all too. that stuff. Who doesn't? Um, all right, we talked about... Which, what, have, what have we not talked about? Uh, check um, your table. The pearlized ponies. Oh, okay, let's talk about Toys for Cats. I don't know if I can reach her from here. Let me get it. I got it. So, 
So you guys, well, that looks like it looks like the birthday. It pony. does look exactly like the uh, the birth flower ponies. I'm gonna go back to uh, camera two here. God, this backwards camera is driving me absolutely up the wall. Um, so here's your birth flower pony. Has a flower on the butt, pink and white. Uh, here we have a toys for tots pony. Now, what's really neat about her is that you uh, you did get her by mail order. Um, you had to purchase her. And when she came in, they also donated one of her to Toys for Tots. So for every purchase that you made back in the 80s of this little pony, the one got donated to charity. Um, this version has a absolutely terrible haircut. Oh. I definitely... I think, uh, who said that they... Uh, Eric? Who yeah, said that they Eric, I think, I think you this had... This is one of them. I think you had at, had at her. Um, she's got a pretty bad haircut. But, um, yeah, it's not it's not good, so we're just going to turn it around again. <laughs> um, I do need to upgrade her, but you know what? I'm proud to have her in my collection. She's not one of your she's originals, really right? Cool. She's not one of my originals. Right. Um, none of my ponies have haircuts, and I really want to stress that. Um, I would have been murdered, physically throttled by my mother, had I ever did anything like that to any of my ponies. None of my Barbies have haircuts. None of my ponies have haircuts. You know, growing up with not a lot of money... I really it gave me an appreciation for things, and I think that might be one of the reasons that I, I am the weird toy hoarder that I am today. Um, I could not imagine manhandling my, my toys, because it's not like I was going to get another one. If I cut my pony's hair, that was it. It had a bad haircut, and I didn't get another one. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons that I kind of didn't do anything like that to my ponies. Um, although, and this is a great segue, um, I did have something called pony makeup. I'm going to actually bring this bag down. You know, there's a whole fetish for that now. Pony makeup? Well, they wear bridles and like... So, it's funny that you mentioned that, Justin, um, because earlier today... It? Yeah, because earlier today I was doing some Googling just to refresh some of like my specifics. Like, uh, there's some years I needed to remember and just some details I wanted to lock in. And uh, yeah, Googling ponies and pony lady and stuff. Yeah, no, it's not something you want to do. Um, it's scary out there. Pony makeup was really fun for me to look up. Um, I don't recommend you do that with image search turned, safe search turned off on your on your phone like I did. So starting in uh, I think eighty eight or eighty nine, um, something called pony makeup started coming in um, as a freebie. Do you remember when GI Joe did like the little mini figures that came with some of them? Yep. Or like the ring. Yep. Um, or like the face paint. Yep. All that ridiculous crap. Well, My Little Pony did the same thing. Again, being a Hasbro property. They did ribbons as well. Like medals. Oh, I'm thinking My Little Pony ribbons. Yes, they did the, the G.I. Joe ribbons. Um, so one of the things that My Little Pony would do, they did stickers, uh, especially in the earlier years. Then they changed some of the stickers were scratch and sniff. Some of them were puffy, um, but they would come in the packaging along with the other accessories. Um, I think it was 88 or 89, they started doing pony makeup, included as a freebie in some of the... Um, ponies you could buy and it's makeup for you to wear no it's for the ponies okay that's where the segue between cutting hair and not damaging ponies and pony makeup comes into play um turns out pony makeup stains your ponies i found that out the hard Is way it just okay. sharpies no it's not just sharpies um so it, there were two different kinds of makeup uh, i think it was just two different kinds there may have been more um you guys correct me if i'm wrong i'm not afraid to be wrong correct me there was eyeshadow and lipstick that I remember specifically because I had one of each. Um, I had gotten the perfume, perfume puff ponies. I had two of those, and they both came with a different piece of makeup. They don't really have lips. They don't really have lips. They don't really have eyelids either. But it didn't stop me from slathering pony makeup all over a couple of my ponies. As a matter of fact, you can clearly still see it on Sundance here. Take a look at her eyelids. So pony makeup came in three or four different colors, and it looked exactly like like the eyeshadow. It was a tiny little tray with eyeshadow and a little eyeshadow applicator. And the idea was that you'd put it on your ponies to, to make them pretty. Um, yeah. Like there's a little bit of blue in there. Or yeah, something. Just it's a, a little bit. It was like a seafoam green. I used the hell out of that eyeshadow. I got a seafoam green eyeshadow and like a pinkish lipstick. Um, I was smart enough to never put the lipstick on the ponies, but the eyeshadow I figured was fine. Um, boy, was that a mistake. Any pony I put it on, even though I immediately wiped it off, ended up with green eyelids. So this is my Sundance from when I was a little girl. And if you look carefully, you can still see the little shadow of her green eyeshadow um, from my perfume puff pony who came with the free eyeshadow. Um, but along in the package, along with that, you also got a brochure where you could buy other mail away ponies or you could mail away for this cool little pony makeup bag. My Little Pony always in fashion. 
So this was the mail away that went along with the pony makeup. Um, now, uh, you asked if, I, if it was for people. I used the lipstick as a little kid. I never put the lipstick on my ponies. I don't know why. Thank God I didn't. Oh my God. It's, it was probably like lead. Like, it that was, was probably, not FDA approved. Yeah, it was probably lead based. Oh There's no God. way. There is no way it was FDA approved. Jesus. No way. Um, but that eyeshadow went on my eyes and my ponies. The lipstick, thank God. I don't know what possessed me not to use the lipstick on them. Thank, I guess because they have no lips. That's probably it. They yeah, really like, didn't. How do you, you know, so they're um, going to look like a. You know, like the Joker. Uh, Karen on a yeah. Friday night at TGI Fridays, <laughs> all, all like Percocet it up, no. make lipstick all over her face. No. Want to party like a fireman? Anyway, um, so this cute little bag, I'm obsessed with like the weird ephemera, eph, ephemera. Ephemera. Can you tell that it's late in the day and we haven't had ephemera. enough coffee? Ephemera. I'm obsessed with all that stuff, so I do have this little bag and a couple other little That stuff is the most fun stuff. I love it. I have like three or four lunch boxes. As a matter of fact, um, I have a whole kit that I put together for doing pony hair. You know, when ponies come in the store, they need to be cleaned up and put in the pony spa. You gotta wash the hair, gotta get it all curly and do all the cool stuff with them. I have a whole kit of curlers, brushes, all that stuff that I keep in a pony lunch box right here behind the bar at the store. Um, I love that stuff. I love all the accessories and weird stuff. Yeah, G.I. Joe did a bunch of travel stuff like yeah. tooth, toothbrush. I love and... it. My Little Pony did that. Tissues, toothbrush, yep. all that all that kind of stuff. Hasbro was on the ball with that yeah. kind of... They were smart with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the little bag that you could mail away for to put all of your pony makeup that you should not be putting on your face um, <laughs> into the bag. Um, who is left here? I do have a couple more. Let's do... Oh, these are cool. Twice as fancy. I don't think we've talked about twice as fancy ponies yet. I'm, I said the name, but we haven't talked about what they are. Yeah. So twice as fancy is um, basically exactly what it sounds like. These ponies are twice as fancy as a regular pony. Jesus. Um, so again, to use They're like this, the circus freaks. To use Morning Glory as a sample, this is the typical symbol: one or two colors, maybe as the years went on, a few more colors thrown in there just just to make it interesting. Um, but a fairly simple symbol. Uh, these ponies are twice as fancy, so their symbols take up their almost their entire butt area. Yeah, they're like ta body tattooed. Yes, and even like you mentioned earlier, did any other ponies have anything on their heads? This one has a uh, berry uh, up there on her forehead. Um, now these are baby they versions. They are easy to identify if they were doing crimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, she had a strawberry between her eyes. Yeah, she had a strawberry tattooed on her face between her eyes. Um, so these baby ponies, they were a mail away. It was a whole set. I only have two from the, the whole set. Um, but they are basically miniature versions of adult ponies. Um, Sugarberry and Sweet Tooth I have here. Um, Sweet Tooth has uh, lollipops all over her butt. And Sugarberry has sugar berries all over and all over her head there. Um, they're basically just baby versions of their adult counterparts. Um, Sweet Tooth is a little different. Sweet Tooth is a unicorn, whereas her mother is what they call an earth pony, meaning no horns, no wings, no fancy, just four feet, you know, four hooves and a face. Um, I assume so, that was a retroactive name for the regular ponies. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Mark said they're bedazzled, <laughs> and that's a great... Uh, so, I've got to say... Was, if that was sparkly... <laughs> I've got to say, as far as ponies go, these are not the most garish. Um, as the years went on, like I mentioned, neon colors became more of a thing. We had see-through bodies with glitter embedded inside. Um, we had all kinds of neon, crazy. We had a lot of island-style ponies, like tropical. Hey, man! That had, like, no Rastafarian hats or anything, but they did have, like, crazy eye makeup, like we mentioned earlier. Um, what we, does being on the islands mean cra crazy eye makeup? I don't know. They're just like party ponies. They're like tropical party girls. Going, I don't know. They're like sandals resort ponies. Like. Yes, exactly. That is literally, it's funny you say that. That is exactly the vibe that I get when I think of um, them. Alicia said <laughs> uh, she had gotten some ponies. She, Alicia is a, uh, a barber. Um, she does styles hair. She does hair. And she said um, she got ponies for the barber shop for little kids, you know, while they're sitting there probably waiting yeah. for their parents or whatever. <laughs> and uh, the, the kids murdered the hair. And, uh, yeah, it's understandable. Hopefully they weren't G1s. <laughs> hopefully they were yes, later. Yes, hopefully. Or they were fakies, which is the, the yeah. common term for fake My Little Ponies. Yeah. Um, knockoffs is what not, we call Knockoffs, yeah, fakies. Mark wants to know if I would rock a G.I. Joe fanny pack. Uh, if it were actually a vintage... I don't know if they made I don't think they made If it one. was a vintage G.I. Joe fanny pack, no offense, it wouldn't fit you. No sh... Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, what sucks is even as a kid it wouldn't. I was a, I was a, a round <laughs> lad as well. 
So none of like that cool stuff they ever anybody ever put out, like clothing wise, would ever. Dude, I I wore like you know when I was a kid, uh, Holly. <laughs> Halloween costumes were just like a plastic bag oh God, you put on yeah. your body. Yes, terrible. And, and a hard plastic mask that didn't work with glasses. And it's, not even that hard, really, because they I would remember, crack all the time. I had a, a Batman bag that I had on, and I looked like Batman sausage. <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible. Halloween sucked yeah. when I was a kid. The candy was great, yes. but the costumes... Uh, anyway. You're making me really want to eat candy now. Um, especially with Baby Sweet Tooth right here in front of me. Um, so Twice as Fancy Ponies, I have to be honest, by the time they came out, I was just starting to, like, I had, my ponies were in storage by this time. Um, once my ponies went into storage, I really didn't get any more. I think I got one or two at yard sales after that time, and they ended up just, like, living in my bathroom for the next ten years, um, as a kid. Uh, so I, I was, I had drawn back from buying ponies new, really. Um, so I didn't really have very many Twice as Fancies as a little kid. Um, as an adult now, I have tons of them, um, but uh, they they don't they don't do a lot for me, honestly. I guess because I don't have that nostalgic draw. They're garish. But they are they're cool. They're they're just on the cusp of the '90s neon garish sci-fi what craziness. What year did, did G1 Pony stop? '91. Oh, okay. It was it was a ten year run. All right. So 1991 was the last year. Um, yeah. That's less than ten years. That's yeah. Well, '81. Yeah. It's ten. It's ten full. I believe it's ten full. Counting years. my pretty pony. I I think even without my pretty pony, it's ten full okay. years um, of my little pony. Um, so the twice as fancies were sort of uh, not in my wheelhouse as a kid. Um, as an adult, I don't have super great nostalgic feelings for them. Um, but they were just like like this style of pony was just on the cusp of them going really crazy. Um, Mark, speaking of going really crazy, Mark asked a great question. Did they ever do a translucent pony with light features? I can't imagine them spending the money. They never did light features, but there were tons of translucent ponies. Mostly with glitter. Um, some of them did glow in the dark. So you had wow. like... Yeah, so the glitter would glow in the dark, or their symbols would glow in the dark, oh, or like a mix of cool. the two. Um, they did... Um, did they ever do like... So G.I. Joe had Zartan, and when the light would hit that certain kind of plastic, the plastic would change color. Or there was like, um, you remember the things that, like Freezy Freakies or, 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 yep, or Warm change. Water would Yep, color. so um, there was a type of pony called Magic Mirror on their butt symbol. It would be like a an interesting design and heat would actually make it change. Um, just whether it's your breath or just rubbing it um, with your thumb, that would make it change. They easily were scratched and damaged. Um, so if you find one of them today, the color, find them, it's hard. the color change feature almost never works. It doesn't work with Zartan anymore either. Yeah. Really. Some of them had hair that changed color, um, in the sun. Um, oh, the hair makes a lot yes, of sense. Yes. I can't recall the name of the, the line, but they were all beach themed. The idea being you took your pony to the beach and there would be a stripe of its hair that would change color. Um, I had one called Sunspot that, that, that did that, um, had like the one stripe that would just kind of change color. Um, the 90s were all about color change. I had a pair of well, LA Gears that 91. changed color. 80, 88 to Late 90. Late 80s into early yeah. 90s, okay. It's that like 80, When you say 80, 90s, I think like, because G.I. Joe didn't until 94. Yeah. So I started thinking about that, but Pony ended well before that. It's, it was really like 89, 90, 91, 92. When I say that 90s, because when did sci-fi come out? 85. Really? Yeah. He Sci-fi really? was an anomaly so it's like so a, she keeps bringing up a, a GI Joe called Sci-Fi. Yeah, who was who, the first fluorescent color Joe? If you Google him, you'll understand why I keep referring to him. He's just bright green. He was probably <laughs> a, um, a, uh, a a hint at things to come. Not to get too deep into GI Joe, because up until then, GI Joes were very based in in, in like Re real military, mi real military or experimental yeah. military. Yeah. You know, uh, and then he came out and he was bright green, but he was still cool in '85. Yeah. But like, and he was kind flash of like forward to Star Wars space travel. Reagan no, no, but he was the laser rifle trooper. Yeah. But uh, but not not until you get to like ninety one is everybody wearing yeah. crazy colored you know fluorescent camouflage and stuff. Um, Alicia just said something that absolutely breaks my heart. My mom threw out all my ponies when I was a teenager because I didn't play with them anymore, and she was cleaning out the basement. All those '80s ponies gone to the dump. Aww. That kind of thing kills me, yeah. and that's one of the reasons I think. I'd rather heard she sold them at a yard sale or something. I think Alicia. I think that's one of the reasons that I I'm so obsessed with preserving toys because as a kid, maybe I didn't get the toys I wanted. As an adult, I'm now hoarding them. But also that idea of preserving them and, and giving them back to people. Mark said like the Autobot rubs with the heat. Yep. Yes. And he exactly. also he also made a joke about Freezy Freakies. Mark, 
Larry Hama did a lot of the graphic design for Freezy Freakies. When I found out that, it blew my mind. He, he told me a whole story about designing Freezy Freakies. Yeah, I, it's funny how things I love around. Freezy Freakies. Larry so Hama, uh, the guy who gave every G.I. Joe his personality. Yeah. So anyway. So cool. All right, so... Uh, we're pushing an hour and a half We here. are pushing an hour and a half, and I still have... And you have, were afraid you would do whatever I I still have about. two more things to talk about, one of them being the giant playset behind me. Um, so uh, those are the twice as fancy babies, which are so cool. A really cool fact about those... Um, they were made in both China and Hong Kong, and the they have variants. Um, the Hong Kong variant has a short... That sucks for collectors. It does. It does. Because even if they came from the same factory, there are still variants. I have variants in my collection that are from the same factory, stamped with the same information, and they are totally different. Molds and everything. Like, one foot is this way, one foot is that way, and there's no oh, wow. color, colors, eye colors, totally different. Just like Star Wars, there was sometimes no rhyme or reason for that stuff. Um, and that, the accessories... This, for example, this set, some of them came with a turquoise duck instead of a pink duck. No Tur rhyme Turtles, reason. Playmates did that yeah. in the 90s with no turtles. Uh, sometimes the, no I think whatsoever. Baxter Stockman's, they would reverse yep. the colors of the weapons. They did, they depending did, on, they you know, did a lot of that stuff. It's probably, uh, you know, what, what they had handy plastic It's ones. whatever they had laying around, yeah. whatever was cheap, whatever was, was yep. good to go. Um, so this little girl is really neat. Now, I've talked about some regular production stuff. I've talked about some mail-away stuff. Um, this is the only thing that I brought today that was not available either way. You couldn't go to a store and buy this. You had to uh, survive a gauntlet. And you couldn't mail away for it either. You had to uh, go to Chuck E. Cheese. Look at her butt there. Zooming in. Her Chuck E. Cheese butt symbol there. Yes, that is Chuck E. Cheese on her butt. And it says Chuck E. Cheese there as well. Um, Georgia is saying goodbye. Uh, it's nearly midnight where she is. Georgia, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being a, a, a VIP. Um, I really hope you had fun here, and we can't wait to see some videos of your ponies. And you'll be able to go back and watch this complete video if you want to finish. You, yep. We still have to talk about the um, Paradise Estate. Paradise Estate. <laughs> so this will be on YouTube, and it'll also be posted on the page, Georgia. Thank yeah. you for, for joining the group yeah, and, thank and you uh, hanging with us. And we're, we can't wait to see your collection. Um, Dina, I have no idea how many tickets she was worth. Um... How much disgusting Chuck E. Cheese pizza did you have to eat to I, get this? I, listen, I have a lot of questions about this. Um, this is one of only two ponies that you could only get at certain locations. The other one uh, was only available at a stationery store, and it was a Valentine pony. I have her too, but i got to be honest, I can't find her. I was going to talk about her today. I can't find her. Um, but Chuck E. Cheese pony here is uh, sort of a lavender pink with nice bluish purple hair. Um, could only get her from Chuck E. Cheese. Now, from what I understand, you could trade her in for tickets or just flat out buy it for cash. Okay. But that's cheating. <laughs> you kind of use your tickets You had to, to play skee-ball to get her. Um, just a really cool, rare, weird... You know, i got to be honest, I didn't look her up. I don't know you what she's to, worth. You had to arm wrestle the manager. But it's a really interesting and weird... It's just weird. And again, late in the line. 80, 89, 90, I think. Um, because they were they were reaching, you know, they were just trying to trying to get some more kids. Yeah, Mark made yeah. a great point of um, of different color accessories. Mark says that uh, it was usually based on distribution factory. Some colors were represented by what country it was produced in. So that with GI Joe, um, there were multiple factories in different areas yeah. producing different things. Yeah, and uh, there'd be variants. Um, notably, uh, heavy metals microphone in the mall. Oh, ball. God, yeah. There's one factory that I think <laughs> barely even They never even the got them. Right. You can buy that toy brand new, open it, and the microphone not is to get not too deep inside. in it. We'll get into that if I ever yeah. review it. But There are definitely variants um, as far as My Little Pony goes. I told myself I was not going to collect them, um, but I already have, I have two Flutter Ponies that have totally different poses, totally different wings, totally different symbols, but they are the same pony. Uh, both from Hong Kong. Uh, who knows? Um, those uh, Twice as Fancy, same deal. Hong Kong, they had like little bangs that stuck out. Um, the China Factory just had all one length of hair. Um, a, a lot of ponies just have little tiny variations like that. Came with different colored Star pens. Wars. I mean, you know, they're, they're because of yeah. plastic molds are, are yeah. you know, they're, they're not perfect when you pour them. Nope. There are people that just collect paint variations and mold variations. It's crazy. It's endless. And you could go completely insane. I'm a fan of collecting one version of, of each thing. I'm the same way. And I, I actually, tend to go for the rarer version. I'm the same way. There. I actually did that with Baby Princess Sparkle. I had both versions of her at one point, and I kept the version that was more rare at the time. And at this point, they're both worth so much, I don't think that there's much difference. Um, so that is all of the 
little stuff that I brought to talk about today. How? There's one more yeah. thing. Are we going to show this thing? I'm going to pick up camera two and walk it back there. Have fun. Um, this yeah. is freaking so, amazing, so, I have to um, say. There's only been a few regular production pieces that I talked about today. Everything else has been mail order or like Baby Chuck E. Cheese, kind of like off the cuff or uh, like Toys for Tots. Is that the name of that pony, Baby Chuck E. Cheese? I don't know, just Chuck E. Cheese. It doesn't have a name? No, not really. It's just the Chuck E. Cheese pony? Some ponies didn't really have like a name. It's Baby Chuck no. or something? No, some ponies oh didn't God. have names. So Baby Ember's original name was just My Beautiful Baby Pony. Oh, no. And then later on... How do you play with that pony? When I ordered Baby Ember, I didn't order Baby Ember. I ordered My Beautiful Baby Pony. When I got it, then it was Ember. All the paperwork said Ember on it. Because oh, that's when the movie had come out. Wow. So after the movie came out, they rebranded their brochures with By Baby Ember. But until that point, it was, um, it was just Beautiful Baby Pony. All right, so like I said, most of the stuff I talked about today hasn't been a um, regular production. If you want, it's I could been... slide this so you can actually see. We can see it from camera one and camera two if we sit sideways a little bit. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, this thing is enormous. This was a regular production piece um, from uh, year four of My Little Pony, 1985-1986. Um, this playset was released after the movie because the, the, the preeminent playset before the movie was the Dream Castle. Um, you guys, I'm sure, could could imagine it. Just your regular pink castle with the little turrets, just like a... We'll do it over here. Yeah, oh, I've got one of them, too. We'll talk about it, I'm sure. Um, but that was replaced. The new place that you absolutely had to have was Paradise Estate. Um, and we have one here. Now, I'm going to get up. That's the box behind me. Yeah. I'm going to grab camera two. And I'm actually going to try real hard not to screw this up. And I'm gonna put it on camera two. Oh, there we go. Are we on camera two? Yep. You can actually look at the TV and see. Oh, I'm just zooming in on some random stuff. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to Paradise Estate. Yes. So. Now, how many pony flag points did this come with? Oh, uh, look at the back of the box. I didn't see. So this is Paradise Estate. Now I've got some of my ponies in there playing. Let me get a shot of the box. This is really hard to do. Um, wow, it's magnificent. This is really hard to control. Wow, okay. So that is the box. Wow. I'm going to try to focus that. I've got to say, Hasbro in the 80s. With the amount of plastic they threw this at toys. This thing is enormous, guys. I can't even back up far enough to get it all in frame. This piece is huge. So we've got Eternia from He-Man. I actually have one right up there. I would say the Paradise Estate is as big as Eternia, if not bigger. Same amount of plastic. It's certainly the same amount of plastic. It now, this thing came with over 60 accessories. And when I say accessories, I mean, I didn't even put everything out because it was just too much stuff. Um, cups, actually, spoons. There's a bag somewhere of all the extra stuff. Cups, spoons, bite baby bottles. The the box art is absolutely gorgeous. I really want to zoom in on that for a second. Is um, that Megan? That is. So I've actually recreated the box art a little bit with my own some of my own stuff here. Oh. I'm getting in my own light. Oh. Oh. There's uh there's Megan, hanging out. There's Sundance. I'm getting in my own shadow. I'm gonna go through the door here. Here, Justin, open the door for me. Welcome. Don't be afraid. It's fine. <laughs> oh, it's, it's... oh, it goes in. Oh. <laughs> see, I could have... See, I, don't be afraid, don't Justin. Don't be afraid, Smash. Um, oh, that sucks. On the box, it opens out. Maybe I put them in wrong. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I've may, I may have oh, put them in Oh, you put them in wrong, wrong probably. I That's may have put them in wrong. So if there's ever a fire here... I've got to be 100% honest with you guys. I've got to focus on this. If there's ever a fire... <laughs> Stop. And they're trying to get out... Stop. And they... The, you... That's, that's out of the code. Stop. That's, um... You're fucking with me. Stop. Oh, um, oh F-bomb. Jesus. Oh, sorry. PG-13. Um, I have never actually put this piece together. Today is the first time I've ever actually put it all together at, at one time. Um, so this playset has four main rooms, as you can see. And it also has a swimming area so that your ponies can get their pool on back there. Um, the back of the box... Thank you, Justin. The swimming pool can be filled with water. The sides swing open for easy access to all areas of the estate. Um, all the four rooms were fully furnished. I don't see the pony points. Maybe it didn't come with pony 
boys. Well, that's a jip. Maybe by then they weren't doing it. Wow, look at these. These are actual pictures of it. Look at the yeah. big, how big the rooms are. They have ceiling fans? There are ceiling fans. I'm going to get to that. I do have the ceiling fans there. How long is my cord? I can walk all the way around this thing. So we're just going to look inside some of the rooms. There's the ceiling fans that Justin was just discussing. Wow. Here's a couple of my ponies hanging out there in the pool. Um, there's a nursery room, a living room, a kitchen, and a bedroom that you can play with there. My cords are getting all over myself here. I'm having some trouble zooming in. So, um, Mark asked if it's bigger than the Defiant. I would have to say no. Um, the Defiant's very dense. Uh, as far this as... This has a lot of very light and airy details. Yeah, so... As you can imagine. It, 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 gives the, the, it gives the impression... It takes up a lot of real estate because it's spread out. But if you open it up, it's, it's just walls and roofs. It's not, like, solid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a ton of small pieces and stuff. Um, I have to say, it's, it's kind of more like the, the, the flag or the terror drone. As far as it takes up a lot of real estate, but it's um, it's like a hollow place that where is... I'd like to actually get into some of the rooms. I don't know how to take the top Just off. Just lift, you don't take the top off, just lift up the whole thing and move it out. There you go. Yeah. So the idea of this is that you can, if you can kind of see up there, you can actually like unfold it and get to all the rooms. I'm having trouble walking, my cord's not long enough to walk all the way around. Um, I'm just doing a little spin, I want to show off some of the furniture and stuff. Doors, um, a chair. You got like a bedroom action there. See, it's like a dollhouse where yes. it's it's very open. Now, what's really cool about this playset? What's really cool about this playset is that a lot of the accessories were um, Megan sized. Megan is the girl. And all these pegged together, right? Yes, everything uh, Justin just mentioned. They snap in here, and then the pieces peg in there so that you can open them and play around. I'm getting in my own shadow, but I think you Sorry. guys get the idea. Um, I've got the instructions, which is really cool. Now, I want to point something out with those instructions. Can you hand it to me? I looked at these earlier. Did you? <laughs> so did I, to put it together. <laughs> these are exactly like G.I. Joe instructions. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the blue ink, with the boxes, with the numbers. This is Hasbro 101. Pull that open. I Obviously, the people it. who were doing the instructions for these things. If that doesn't look like G.I. Joe instructions, and you know, if you're knowing half the battle... <laughs> These are exactly... The only thing that's missing is blueprints. Yeah. Do me a like, favor. Can you, uh, when you're done with that, can you actually take camera too? Sure. I just want to show off a couple cool things. The screen might go black. Just double tap it. It'll come back on. Um, so a couple pieces that I think are really cool uh, that came with Paradise Estate. Um, my two all-time favorite My Little Pony accessories. Um, a stacking toy. I don't know if you guys can see that really well. It is minuscule. Each one of these little donut pieces actually comes off. I'm not going to take them off because I'll lose them. Oh my god, I think I had that off. as a kid, that toy. They all come off. It's a baby toy. Um, yeah, everybody had one of these. And this is actually a little pulling, it's a little wheeled duck toy that you can They really love on. their ducks. They, they're they cute. Ducks are adorable. Duck Soup is one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite characters from, from My Little Pony. Those are my two favorite My Little Pony accessories, and they come in here. Um, a lot of accessories for some of these play sets were all recycled. Those are two that were also used in other ponies. Um, what else do we have here? Here, just take a look down here. Let's, we've got Megan is hanging out in jail, it looks like. She's hanging out in her little chair. Now, Megan is the girl who hangs out with My Little Ponies. She has a little sister, Molly. So, presumably, the chairs were for Megan. She was the star of the movie, right, with Sundance? Or no? You're putting me on the spot. i got to be honest, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I know get, she came with Sundance. Get, yeah, I get the movie and the cartoons really confused, and I don't want to misspeak, so I'm just going to say it. I don't remember. <laughs> Sundance and Megan are really cool. They did come as a set, which was really neat. Um, and did any ponies come really with cool. this thing? No. This was just... So there's no vehicle came, drivers? No. It came with over 60 accessories. And when I say accessories, these little lights all came all came off. These little awnings are all, all separate pieces. Yeah, so here's where... It's, this is where it beats, like... It, you know, the flag takes up a lot of real estate, but this has a lot of... Uh, every room is full of furniture. Yeah, see, here's the kitchen. We have a sink and a, you know, a refrigerator going on there. Wow. Yeah, I could do this all day. There's so much going on here. This is like You a, sound like Captain America. This is a bedroom. Uh, so I've got some damage on the side here. This, what is that? It's melted plastic, but it's not... The item itself isn't hurt. It's like on top Somebody of it. Somebody was leaning against it. Yes, exactly. We've got a little living room here. Um, got 
guys, I could go on and on all day about these accessories. It's absolutely crazy. You're just zoomed in on my torso, chest, for some reason. Could you? <laughs> I'll try to read comments. Here, you can hand it back to me. Um, what else do I really love about this piece? You know what? I really love... One more thing I want to point out. Mark said sometimes that Hasbro would print points on uh, a piece of cardboard that went inside the box instead of going to the box itself. That That's a good thing. That... that I would not be surprised if that were the case. Small version of play school toys, which is they what they are. So that's great cross merchandising. That's, that's really great, cool. uh, great, per, um, great point. My favorite thing about this playset. Tara said the accessories were always her favorite part. The accessories are what make it. I mean, it's just a bunch of plastic, but it's 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 really cool. Um, one last thing I want to talk about before we go. My all time favorite thing about this playset. Um, you can actually zoom it right back down. I'm going to talk about the pool here. So I was obsessed with uh, the sea ponies when I was a kid. This, I didn't have this as a kid. I wish I did. It would have been amazing. This is a swimming pool. The ponies can go into the swimming pool. And you got to zoom in on these details. There are tiny statues of sea ponies outside of the pool. Oh, that's what those are? Yes. They're just tiny little statues of sea ponies. Of actual sea ponies. How cool is that? And then all of this greenery. These are individual flowers that actually snap into place down there. They gotta be rare. They are awesome and cool and rare. And I love sea ponies. I love the little sea pony, little statues. I love the greenery and I just love the whole pool area. Look at them hanging out in there. Yeah. Who are those sea ponies? Two of my favorites. Um, you got rusty butts? You put me on, on the spot. No, because the baby ponies, see the baby ponies didn't have the weighted butts. They have these little floaties. All right, I have a question real quick. And they can just sit. Let's I'm go. looking at the chair. Yeah. And I'm wondering how a pony sits in that chair. A pony doesn't sit in the chair. Megan and Molly sit in the chair. This was one of the So only... all these play sets are really yeah. for the for the, well, the this two was, dolls. No, this was um this was one of the play sets that had a lot of uh, the human stuff, a lot of the accessories, the bed, obviously. No pony is sleeping in, in the this style bed. Um, and yet the nursery, a baby pony would certainly fit in the nursery bed. So this was cool because it came with a nice mix Damn, of... Megan had it made. Yeah, it came with a nice mix of human play play parts as well as pony play parts. So you could do either thing. Gotcha. It wasn't just ponies, it wasn't just Megan. You know, it, it, that's what made My Little Pony so cool. One of the things that made it so cool. You did have a human element with Megan and Molly. Um, and there were different versions of Megan and Molly available. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. This is just like your standard Megan. The is there the twice as fancy segments. Megan? There is twice as fancy no, Megan. No, I'm just kidding. No, you're not kidding. I'm kidding. Dad, you're cutting off my head. There was twice as fancy Sundance that came with twice as fancy Megan. Her dress was covered in the symbol Sundance She had body symbol. tattoos. Full she body did, tattoos. She did not have full body and tattoos. sparkly eyes from the no. slavers. No. All right. <laughs> on that note, on the slavers, the third or fourth slavers content that we're going into here. Um, guys, I'm going to run and put it back on camera one just so we can sign off here. Megan looks great in there. Justin, you're, you're doing a great job, I love it. She looks great, look at that. Okay, All it's right. not even on you anymore. All right. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry if I took up too much of your time. We've been babbling on. I was worried that I wasn't gonna have enough to talk about. I should have known better. Um, this was super fun. Um, now this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, I, I didn't want Justin to have all the glory and just talk about G.I. Joe for seven weeks in a row. Oh, I don't want to just talk about G.I. Joe. I had to break it up with something. There's many other toys. <laughs> I had to break it up with something. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad. It was a, a cigarette and a uh, yeah. shot of Jack Daniels. Now they're, so Mark, Mark and Justin. Mark asked what Megan's butt tattoo yes, was. Yes, Mark and Justin are making fun of Megan. Megan is wholesome. Megan is in, uh, Megan's in the movie. She has some sort of rainbow locket. Um... Again, I've got to be honest with you guys, and I've said this a couple times this stream. She had a pony tattooed on her butt. Duh. My my pony my pony play uh, my pony me playing with my ponies. I wasn't like reenacting the movie. I don't think I even saw it uh, as a young kid. It was just me having adventures with with my ponies. Yeah, well, just like with GI Joe, nobody ever died in the cartoon. But believe me, Cobras <laughs> died. Co died. Died. GI Joes. Died. Um. um. Uh, I'm, guys, I hope this was fun. I was uh, kind of all over the place, um, but I hope it was fun. Um, there's, I had fun. I learned. There is some cool, rare My Little Pony stuff. Uh, there's more stuff that I don't have that I wish I had that's even more rare than some of the stuff you saw today. Um, my collection is vast. 
I would love to just sit down and just maybe I'll do a year by year. This or, is year or one. Or type this is by year type. Two. Flutter twice as fancy. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Because yep. um, I have so many ponies, I would love to showcase. Um, yeah, I keep saying um, so I guess that means that it's time for me to. Stop this was talking. fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> We, uh, if you want to support our Patreon, please. Oh, let me put the link back There's up. There's a hold link. It um, should come hold up on, right now. Hold around. on, I have too many things. There you go. The link is right here. Um, <laughs> please support. Uh, we get to let us do more of these things. Uh, if you are p- part of our Patreon, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're part of our Patreon, you get to actually be part of the yeah. conversation. Like Harold and Dina and Alicia and, and Georgia Mark and, Mark and Georgia and Eric Alex. and, and, uh, and I feel like Miss Molly in the, um, Looking through the Molly, you mean Megan's little sister Molly? No, I'm Miss Molly in uh, Romper Room. Good golly, Miss Molly. Um, Mark said we totally schooled him on My Little Pony. More info on the toys that made Thanks. us. Thanks, and that's because I googled a bunch of dates today so that anyway, I didn't look like an idiot. The Toys that made us episode is fantastic. Please it is. watch it. It's watch our episode great. of A Twister Near You. What I love subscribe about subscribe to the channel. Yes, I, I, you got our me, channel. Yeah, well, any channel. Um, <laughs> you got me uh, thinking about the Toys That Made Us episode of My Little Pony. Some of those pre-production ponies in the standard, like, generic browns and grays are so amazing. I really love it. It's so cool. Yeah. Well, you don't yeah. have any pre-production stuff. No. I, you know, until... Yeah. I, no, I have not gotten into any pre-production stuff. Hopefully, I won't start, because that's a dark road. Yeah. That's darker than the slave mines that the Twinkle Eye Ponies came out of. Wow. So, we're going to leave it there. So, on that note, subscribe <laughs> to our channel. Yeah. Please comment if yes. there's anything you'd like to see or anything they touch on. Or please share photos or, yes. or, or you know... Please. Uh, I want to see your ponies. Mem- the memories of your collections. Yeah. We'd love it. Yes. Guys, uh, it, wait, it was me who said it last time. Now you... Wait, whose turn is it? You <laughs> say it, because I, I talked too much this hour and a half. You say really? it. Really? Yeah. You want me to say it? Yeah, I want you to say it. All right. All right. Uh, Thank you for watching from Retro to Right Now.